and then we can just start because it's what's up and we just start it that's how we do and i need to now adjust my microphone a little bit okay but yeah we're doing it it's what's up hi like he's playing ark knights and trying to stream it right now yes i am it's kind of working it's kind of working that looks a little slow but it's better than what it was uh oof yeah i know that feel oh we found a clue so yeah let's equip that but yeah, so uh, welcome to What's Up. Today, it, we'll actually be talking about games, because last week, I think we said we were going to talk about Gacha. Maybe we didn't at all. Nope. Uh, but since we already mentioned it, we can go ahead and start. So, uh, well, Ark Knights came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, R.I.P. Iron Saga, because immediately everybody in our community stopped playing it to play Ark Knights. Yeah. Like, here's the thing, like, Ark... Iron Saga is fun, but at the same time, it seems kind of a little underwhelming. Like, there's a lot of systems that, that don't feel fully developed or don't make entire sense. So, like, while it was good for a distraction, it's not something that I necessarily want to put a long time and investment into. Right. You didn't. You liked it enough to play it, but not enough to mainline it. Yeah. Arc Knights, on the other hand, though, I'm looking at him like I got a real good feeling about this. Like, um, Omega, if you look at the stream right now, um... It's in the corner, but yeah. Yeah. There, um, you know how XCOM had their base building? Yeah. You can, you can do that in, um, Arknights. That's cool. Alright, yeah, so, I do love XCOM. Yeah, so you have, like, basically a modular building, it's tower defense, um... Yeah, that's the, that's the only thing I knew about it, and I saw you play the game a little earlier, so I'm a little bit like, I don't... I have played tower defense games, I don't think as a, as a gameplay genre as a type that's mm-hmm. really gripping to me but mm-hmm. it's also not like i'm not allergic to it either so yeah and like so like i'm like because honestly if i wanted to put it on a scale of like gotcha games i play like it's somewhere in between azure lane and girls frontline um because like like both of them like you have a dormitory you only get like you get like i'm pretty sure you can get more of them but you can like you have a de- dormitory you can decorate it and the fun thing is, is you can actually put operators in it to give it bonuses, which is something that, you know, I really like. And they have fucking morale. When the morale is done, they become distracted and you have to put them in the dormitory to re- <laughs> Is she just laying down? She's sleeping. Oh my God, that's so cute. But, um, to, for them I to recover sleep. morale, you have your control room, which is all that crazy stuff. But then you can, let's see, we can which go. Which literally up. looks like an X time control room. Yeah. Then we move over to, let's see, here. Uh, what was I going to show next? Fuck. Let me tell you, audience, oh. this is better with visual. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry. But then we move over to the recruit tab, because you know how, like, uh, th- girls... Th- I don't think there's anybody who actually watches What's Up who can't be playing Ark Knights right now. Like, holy shit. Uh, we've gone back to the dark days of gacha games where I'm just like, I'm just going to leave this muted, because I'm not playing Ark Knights right now, and that is all <laughs> people are talking about. Yeah. But, um, it's interesting. So... There's two ways to fucking um, get operators, which are what the new units are called. One way is called recruitment, and the other way is called headhunting. Headhunting is the gotcha. Um, that's what you that's what you spend your um your um or um what's it called originum? I don't know. And it's headhunting. Literally, you your go crystals. out and you just, it's yeah, always some kind of crystal. And that's where you. It's called headhunting. So you basically literally go and fucking black bag them because let, let me. I'm gonna go watch this. I'm gonna show you the fucking um, the fucking um, gotcha screen here because I think it's full. hilarious. But so when you open it up, you for recruitment, you get a timer, and basically depending on how long you set the timer, um, gives you your possible rarity. Um, okay. I'm so and you I can set pick which of your your jobs you want. Yeah, yeah. So you can pick up up to max of three. Uh, let's go. I'm just gonna go with a medic here because I'm trying to get a four star medic. And then it just goes. See, boom. So that's just against. You also have the ability to, you know, to do it fast. Right. Like that. That's very... The aesthetics of this are very girls' front line. Yeah. So we do a hire. Put it on the black bag. Human resources to, uh, department. <laughs> this is a little... It's white, so it's only a three-star probably, yeah. Oh, it's hibiscus. Awesome. I actually promoted this girl, so... So, um... She does have horns and is cute. Like, no, um, all these operators are hella fucking cute here. Um, well, yeah, that's the only, um, like I said, I said this earlier off mic, but this was literally the first time I saw anything about actually playing the game. 
the only thing I have seen prior to this is just character pictures and people's roles and stuff, right? Like, I'm like, yeah. So on the one hand, I was like, okay, that's cool. They're very cute. But also, at the same time, I'm like, but I'm connected to the internet. I have infinite PNGs. <laughs> I need some kind of attachment to these PNGs to make me care about this game. Well, this girl, Hibiscus, she's a medic. She actually heals your units. And I've gotten her before. I've actually gotten a couple times because here's a, here's something that I find interesting about Arknights. Sure, go for it. Um, when you get duplicates, it um duplicates don't do necessarily much. They give you a small bonus. They give you like a wanted thing, but a not a needed thing. Basically, what it does is it improves their potential. And as you can see here, you can do it five times. Um, DP cost is the um how much it costs to deploy them in battle um the redeployment time is when if they're destroyed or you withdraw them that's how long it takes before you can call them back and attack is you know attack for her it'd be healing but as you can see even though it's like five levels all it's going to give you is like minus 10 seconds in its redeployment and a redeployment time and minus two dp cost you know not necessarily groundbreaking but you know certainly helpful in its own right and basically just anytime you get a um duplicate you can do that but also, you can if you go and farm antique medic tokens, you can also do that. So it's just not tied to getting duplicates of the character. It gives you something to fall back on. But yeah, so, so it's now just that... it's more efficient with units. But you can, much like with um bullens or dummy cores, you can get an item to do that mechanic yeah. of spending yeah. duplicates. Yeah. But like, yeah, there's like there's a lot of characters. I'm like, like uh. So I, and then there's another thing I want to ask is. It, at least aesthetically, is Arknight's kind of urban fantasy y because, like, she had a staff as the medic, and I've seen oh, yeah, like, no. the range symbol is like crossbows. You yeah, and no, mages like, as units, I think I saw. Yeah, or so uh, she's, a, she's a medic. Um, she casts fucking um, magic healing. She has a gun, but as you can see, she has this angel motif going on. Um, look, look at her. She got big horn energy and also big shield energy. That's a shield. Yeah, so th this is actually making me more interested because I thought of uh, people you're like saying operator and like the disease and stuff. I thought it was just just animal people and just more generic future stuff. But there's a lot of different different elements here I'm seeing, which is kind of cool. That just yeah, it tickles my my many oh, like, genres. Yeah. yeah, like um, here's my um giant shuriken uh, ninja um sniper. She she actually is AOE um does AOE attacks. Because, um, depending on, like, as I said, every character doesn't have the same attack or same abilities. So, I'll show you the connection web in a minute. But let me see here. And there's just, there's just cutes. Like, we got little demon girls. We got bunny girls. More horns. Wolf girl. I like her name, though. Her name is Project Red. Names are crazy, though. We got Jessica. Meteor. She's another uh, healer. Haze. Rope. Rope is great. Her weapon is literally a fucking grappling hook and a knife. She will literally grab enemies, pull them to her, and start stabbing them. I'm like, this is amazing. And as I said, this is one of those games where it's not all female characters. There are actually there are definitely more female characters male, but you do get your guys in there. Like this guy. Don't don't ask me about his name. You got Lava, Fang. This is a costume. Uh, Plume. So you Rangers. already have costumes? Yeah, you get a free one. There's only one, but it's a free one that you get for completing the oh, zero okay. chapter. All right. This dude I like. He's just he's just big lizard energy. His name's Rangers. We got Noir Corn, twelve F, Duran. So there's Yato. Dragonborn in this. Got it. I'm gonna level her eventually because I love her. Well, of course. I think I saw some art of this character. I retweeted. Yep. This is Deep Color, who is clearly not Hokusai, despite being an artist in summoning tentacles. Mm. <laughs> Gravel. Shaw. This is probably a little boring to the audience, but Lucky's basically just scrolling through his characters, and if you have these characters, you know. And if you don't, yeah. well, you're yeah. fucked. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, well, I'm trying to show it off to Omega a little bit here. That's okay. So I'm. this is this is actually... Th these, like, five minutes have made me more interested in this game than the past however many months of people yelling about it in gacha games. Yeah, so basically you just set up squads, which is 12 characters, which is basically your roster to pull out. And and that's to, a, that's a, um, I like I like that amount of units you can pull from. Yeah, and yeah, they have they have timers to respawn. I think you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, um, let me pull. Let me let me jump into a battle here real quick. I'll do an auto battle so I can talk. All right, well, look, he's not. finding that. I think it's been enough time. I will really quickly remind everybody this episode is brought to you by patrons like Aga Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kyle Denton, Nestor Flores, 
Rogue Robin, Soda Sun 042 for Android Gamer 75. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, you should consider bringing some Patreon because you can get access to episodes early on. Thank you for your support. Thank you. Fast and loud, clunk. Yep. So I'm going to do an auto battle real quick because here's, here's something else I like. If you three-star a map, you can auto-deploy, which basically means everything that you did in that three-star run will just be copied. Okay. Before you go any further, uh, first off, X, no, there's no rule. And no, I'm not required to know anything about when other people talk about it. That's not a rule. Uh, th- that's not how uh, ambassadoring a-, a franchise works. Yeah. It's y- you approach me and let me know why I should give a fuck about your thing because there's so many things. Holy shit. Do you know how many things there are? Because uh, spoilers, guys, we're going to talk about Fallen Order later for sure because I have beaten it and now I'm like, man, yeah, I don't know fuck. what to do. <laughs> I guess I should finish Borderlands 3, I guess. Rule of hosting? What do you mean hosting? What is he hosting about Arknights? No, the like I said, the... the Honestly, I talk about the Dark Days. That's what Gotcha Games as a channel was originally for, was people talked a lot about Fire Emblem Heroes, which I wasn't really into, and about Grand Blue, and I was just like, I think it's okay for you guys to talk about it, but I also don't care at all, and I mean this in, like, the nicest way. I don't care, and if you're in the main channel, you're just going to annoy me, because I'm going to be, like, looking for other conversations, so we split it off into a different topic. Now, when Girls Frontline and then Azure Lane came out, and people finally realized they had an abusive relationship with Fire Emblem Heroes. <laughs> Goodness, so so many, so many people, so many struggles I've seen. Then mm-hmm. it became kind of an even split, because I actually played those games and still play those games. Though AL's not really doing anything. But, like, now they're, like I said, I have it muted just because everybody's talking about Ark Knights. But all they're talking about is, like, oh, hey, here's my squad, or here's some units I rolled, or look at this this pretty PNG, and I'm like, okay. Just because... Man, like I said, damn, dude, there's so much shit in the universe. X, it's not Omega's responsibility to talk to people about things he doesn't want to or doesn't care about. I seriously don't know where you're coming for with that statement. It's an axism. It is an axism. This is why we have... Axe, what you just said there is reasonably, literally why the reason we have a meme that inhales Axe. But now that Lucky is like, oh, hey, let me actually show you the game and talk about it, I'm like, ooh. That's cool. Yeah. This is actually making me care more, but that's because yeah. I have an interpersonal relationship with Lucky, and he can be like, yeah. oh, hey, here's the thing. I'm like, oh, yeah. neato. So, because oh. this happens with lots of franchises. I just want to finish this thought really quick, because this is mm-hmm. not about Ark Knights. But there's a lot of about presentation, and sometimes fandoms will focus in on stuff, and if you just talk about how cool something looks or you know just how neat it is, that doesn't actually necessarily engender people. Uh, Mm Because I've talked about before, like, man, I really love the Dresden Files. It took me a long time to get in that series because all people would say about it was, it's cool. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. So, yeah, all I hear from people about Ark Knights is just, it's coming out and we really like it because look at all these these cute characters. And like I said, my thoughts were like, I'm not super into tower defense games. And like I said, there's infinite PNGs on the internet, so I'll just sit this out and see if I care. And then like, he's like, oh, I want to play this game. And now I'm like, oh, hey, actually seeing it and discussing yeah. its intricacies. That's cool. Like, I, I honestly, I didn't know anything about going Ark Knights until I went into it because I really wasn't paying attention. I was like, I'll play it and I'll learn. <sighs> but anyway, so I'm going to do an auto battle here real quick. I'm not actually going to be controlling um, anything, but it'll basically let you uh, let you see how battle set um are set up. This is just going to be well, the battle I'm running right now, um, for all you listening, is basically just one of the supply missions. It's running at times two speed, by the way. Oh, well, that's good. It has a speed mod- modifier. So basically, every um, every um unit has an initial cost, which is it's called its DP cost. Um, normally, um, and over in there, um, you see it on the um on the right hand on the right hand side. There is a counter. That's what you can. It usually goes up over time, but in this mission, it doesn't. Luckily, I have you. There are units that will give you DP for one reason or another, and I'm using that to basically um, modify it. You have a unit limit. You can only put so many units down, and of course, there's different unit types. Mm-hmm. Like we have these hounds here that you know move fast, but they're not too strong. So my um, also they have what looks like a security camera glued to their back. That's yeah, a little I don't weird. Know. It is a little weird. But as I said, you know, variety of enemies, like, these guys have shields, so they need, like, a little bit more magic damage to fuck them over. 
that's me throwing rope down because oh yeah it's done <laughs> yeah and so i seeing as that was auto i could see like at certain points the game is like strategically like oh hey you've got enough enough stuff's going on we deploy these guys here yeah so that's uh this map is for me to um and i will also get. say this is another thing that comes from only you can see from witnessing but at the same time it's like like nobody volunteered the necessary the layout of the gameplay seeing it's it is a tower defense type game but it's also you've got a grid uh and if people like were trying to sell me on arc knights not that i think anybody has been in particular because i haven't really said anything other than just Mm. eh, i don't Eh. think i i said necessarily whether i was interested or not interested but i see that you have a grid system so Mm -hmm. uh hey guys uh omega is a sucker for squares (laughs) it's probably final fantasy tax's fault but i love squares (laughs) <laughs> it could be Fire Emblem's fault. I don't know. I played both of those at similar formative periods. As I said, like, I'm going to probably keep playing Arknights uh, throughout recording, but I don't want to focus too hard because I said there's a lot of visual stuff going on right now that people... Right, but like I said, I don't I don't know how many people aren't at least trying it. And if you aren't, hey, if, maybe some of the, if you aren't trying it and some of this stuff sounds good, maybe you can try it. It's a tower defense game with waifus and a lot of fiddly bits. Like I said, which is one of my requirements now. It's like it's why I like Girls Frontline a lot. It's um why I like this a lot. Azure Lane doesn't quite have as much, but it's there. But uh, uh, AL has it has some different stuff. I think with the difference yeah. is that you usually playing AL is pretty simple. Like other than purchasing the story, you don't really to like enjoy the story and the characters. You don't really have to do a lot in events unless you're try hard. Uh, but we can talk about AL then. It's really easy. Uh, AL is doing nothing but trying Destroying. to crush your wallet. Yeah, it's trying to murder you. That's all. It's all they've been doing for like a month is they're trying to kill you. And take your money. <laughs> yes. Um, Chinese New Year is coming up, so as is the, the tradition, they've come out with a bunch of new skins. Particularly, I never remember how to pronounce it. I want to say Kipao. Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, Kipao, which are you know. The China dresses with, um, you know, usually long slits to give lots of legs. Oh, yeah. boy. There's legs. And um, there are what we want to call um, non-traditional kipao. Kipao there's adjacent. There's, some, there, there's, there's a lot of danger. Well, and also here. this started because we got PR2. And so I think they just did a batch, which was like one skin for every priority two ship. Mm-hmm. Which included... Uh, FDG got like a kimono or key power or something. I don't know what class that falls. It's kimono. Into. It's, it's, a, kimono. it's okay. a New Year's New Year's, New Year's kimono. Okay. Um, but there's also a couple of uh, swimsuits in there and a couple of other stuff. But like, I think every PR two ship got one. Yeah. And now they're like though, uh, f- they're like fair warning. A, there's a new Royal Navy maid event coming, and B, like you said, Chinese New Year, and they're just key power skins rolling in. Uh, I think the latest one they posted was... Was it Deutschland? Yeah, it was Deutschland. Which you yeah. were like, ah, there was, knew there was going to be an Iron Blood, and it's it's Deutschland, so it's it's a, it's a very sassy key pile. Um, like I said, the levels of tag Fendom are dangerously high. Yeah. Uh, she's sitting on a bench, but wearing uh, leggings or hose, and then just, like, hanging out, foo-foo-fooing behind a fan. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's that's all that's going on with AL. Mm-hmm. Girls Frontline. Um, I had said I was gonna put it on indefinite hiatus. I'm not really doing indefinite hiatus. I'm just not doing much of anything besides some dailies and collecting stuff and upgrading stuff. Oh, and right now there's not much more to do. Um, yeah, that's because they recently launched the HOC unit system, uh, which is something I think is pretty cool because I'm a weapon nerd. So it was like. Like, I was feeling kind of low on the game, but also I'm, like, at the same time, I'm like, ah, I'm improving. I'll start working through story. And then they were like, yo, dog, do you want mortar teams? And I'm like, do I? <laughs> uh, and then it was like, okay, well, to unlock the intelligence center in the garage, you need to not beat, but get to 8-6. And I was like, oh, hey, I'm at the start of chapter 8 right now, so I'll do some story. Uh, so I've been killing it through the story because I have now two max limit break level 100 units. That's right. All those... Uh, command, uh, all those EXP, yeah, combat reports, that's the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I keep buying those from the sal- the sal- salvage, uh, the black market, basically. Yeah, the, the, the last the mechanic they introduced. The um, fob. Yeah, the forward operating base in the black market where you can spend your your loot from your loot rack. 
which is kind of funny that they call it the loot rack. Um, <laughs> but I have just been gathering up those, and yes, now I have high-level units. Uh, they're not, like, optimized units, so there still might be some shenane, but at the very least, I have stable enough units that I can get pretty far in events and stuff, and definitely work on story, which I will be doing. Um, so I pushed through, and I actually got the garage and intel center. They're interesting. Intel is basically just another... I think they wanted to do another construction thing, but it wasn't like... They've already got heavy construction, you know, for both uh, mm-hmm. equips for fairies and T-dolls for, like, shotguns and focused on MGs. You don't need to do heavy construction to get an MG, but it's helpful, because they cost so much. So they were like, okay, we need a new system, because we're not introducing that many of these HOC units. I think there's only three. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say I think. I know there's only three. I just like to hedge my bets. Uh, but right now, there's three in the English version. There's, uh, They have three classes, so there's one, at least three classes anyway. I don't know about like uh, other servers, but in the English one, there's at least three classes. There's... Uh, I. Is it ATR? Or AT- it's there's anti tank missiles basically, mm-hmm. uh, which the first one is uh, one of the American big ATGMs. Uh, there's mortars, so there's mortar team, and uh, which I don't know the model, but it's there. And then there's uh, AGL, so there's an automatic grenade launcher. And I think that's like a Mark Forty. And Mark Forty is the most common one. The uh, yeah. see so it's it's the launcher. it's the big you know grenade launcher machine gun type. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are your three units, and they all have different things. They don't actively deploy in the field they provide long range fire support cuz they're artillery um so they do different things like i believe the the point of like the a- the agm model is to like uh fire high powered rockets which are good at penetrating enemy armor and blasting them but they're not like super big aoe whereas the mortar is probably slower rate of fire but like big aoe on enemy units that kind of stuff <laughs> i haven't really done a lot of regular battles since i've got them unlocked and i should figure that out I had to skip the tutorial because it required me to do a very tiny button press that my phone didn't want to do, so I had to <laughs> wiggle it a little. Um, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants on the mechanics, but there's, like, Game Press and stuff has uh, all these guides and stuff that I followed. But the the int center is pretty basic. It's like, here, you can just, it's all in one. There's no need to go anywhere else. If you want to do HSC stuff, you go here. You can make chips, um, and they have a chip set, which is just the Navi customizer from Mega Man. Battle Network. It's the the chips are literally the programs from that. They're like in the different Tetramino blocks, you know, mm-hmm. and you got to fit them into a little grid, and you can't go outside the grid. And I think the grid can get bigger, but I haven't managed to make it bigger yet. Um, and you have it's like gear, so you have different star levels of chips that you can only equip at different levels, etc. But they do little things like improve your stats and whatnot, just basic stuff. And then also you can get the chips to your actual units, and if you get five of the the unlock chips or whatever for the units, you break a new unit, or you improve their tier, basically. Like, dummy linking them. Uh, Now, the first time you do intelligence analysis, which is this new gotcha system, you get automatically get the five pieces you need for the the anti-tank missile, so if you actually can unlock this facility and you start using it, you will at least get one of these units for free, which I think is very nice of Girls Frontline. There's no need to, like, fuck around and, and at least build one. It's like, no, you can definitely have the unit you need for this at least once, uh, which is nice. And then there's the garage, which is how you train them. You store your chips there. That's where you repair them if they get damaged. And, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Um, where they train. And Oh my god, can... look at this dude. He's amazing. Yeah, I can see him. That is quite a look. Oh, he's got the sleeves. Oh, he's a deer man. I was like, what kind? Of... Yep. But he's got pointy teeth. He's like a wolf deer man. Or maybe he's a dragon man. Or maybe he's mean... just a dragon. Yeah. You know, it, Trogdor! You gotta be care. You gotta be careful when Trogdoring. You don't want to. You don't want to yell too loud. I thought that was the part of Trogdoring. I mean, we're on mic though. Uh, I guess that's true. Is what I'm going for. Like, we don't want to uh, blow anybody's eardrum out. All right, fine. Uh, but yeah. So they let you train. There's you can uh, do combat reports specifically for Hawk units. They need like special combat reports, but. You can do those when making your regular combat report. So I, I expect a lot of people in the game already have all the units they want at level 100. So this gives you a thing you can do with your uh, surplus EXP. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing is they're a little slow. It's like per report used, you like, it takes an hour. Oh, jeez. To train them. 
Uh, but as you improve the training grounds, you can unlock more slots <laughs> between more units, bless you. And you can, Excuse me. I believe, improve the amount of EXP each special combat report uses, so you level more with that time. Um, so they're they're kind of slow going and a little a little finicky, but they're interesting. And like I said, it's it's the kind of stuff that I'm like, damn, dude, I I I love this kind of stuff. I I, I want to run a mortar team, so I have uh built all that stuff, and I'm like, oh hey, shit, batteries. I can spend batteries now forever because mm-hmm. I'm that guy who's constantly tapped out on batteries. And I mean, by tapped out is capped out. I'm full. Uh, I have nine, nine, nine. So much, so many batteries. So it's uh, like fairies. It's an interesting little thing to do a lot of fun. Only I feel like it's a little more materials light than fairies were because I still don't have a lot of different fairies because it's, you know, heavy construction and I'm not mm-hmm. made of materials. So nope. building new fairies is kind of slow going for me. Maybe if they run a fairy raid up. I don't think they've done one of those. Uh, it's true. They've definitely done equip raid ups, so yeah, they presumably yeah. have a fairy raid up. Anyway, the only other thing that's going on right now is right now we're doing a special rescue event. So I'm auto battling five six, I think it is, uh, like three times in a row to try and get Carcano. Uh, it's probably not going to happen because drops in in uh, Girls Frontline suck, but whatever. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I'm having um Valhalla flashbacks. <sighs> Like we said, Girls Frontline clearly is like a game that has evolved over time. It's kind of like how FGO started to really, really lackluster and ramshackle in JP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that Girls Frontline started really skinny with just a very basic concept, and then it was like, oh, shit, there's things we can do to improve this experience and do different things. And then it's like, oh, wait, you know, we're... You know, we figured out what people like, but they're still stuck with some of their underlying mechanics, right? Like how, as far as we can tell, there will never be a direct buff to a servant's, uh, like hit counts. They're like, Girls Frontline is probably at a stage where they cannot unfuck the fact that their drop rates are really, really awful. And I don't know if they want to, but the, the game is clearly like in an evolving stasis, but people will probably yell at us because we've talked about it for so long. <laughs> That's the thing I have picked up is Girls Frontline is apparently kind of polarizing because we've we've gotten some conversations, for instance, back and forth about people. We've heard that the community has been salty about stuff. We're not really part of the wider Girls Frontline community. Nope. And I know that there are even people, though, who are in our community have kind of like back and forth opinions on Girls Frontline, which, as we said, I think it was last week. That's okay. You're you're allowed to be like, oh man, I don't, I couldn't possibly stand Girls Frontline anymore. That's like, that's fine. You couldn't. That's okay. Yeah, that's not. A, that's all do. But we're not like saying just because we are still enjoying Girls Frontline in some capacity, you're like, ah, oh, you were too weak to keep playing. Pathetic. No, your opinions don't hurt us. No, nope. they're they're like words. They're not real. No. Like I said, like everyone has like different capacities. Your interests change, your values change. It's like what is good one day might not be good the next day, and that's completely okay. Uh, yeah, and if you've like, uh, like if you started high on Ghost Frontline and kind of petered out, like Lucky was starting to a little bit there, like mm-hmm. that's okay too. Because like, if the game stops doing whatever it was doing for you, you are allowed to stop playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like, uh, have I ever put money, money into Girls Frontline? I put money, money into Girls Frontline. I regret that decision. I think only to get like a like a a, a, f- a free box or something. I don't think I've ever actually like spent a lot on it. I don't know. Did they do bundles? Azure Lane has got me with the fucking lucky bags and stuff. Hmm. Like that's to me. That's like, oh hey, I'm gonna get like a shitload of gems and a free costume, and then turn those gems into more costumes. That's a good and deal then, for like thirty bucks. And usually there's some extra flavor, least flavor, flavor on there too. Yeah, you usually get an extra couple of things. Like, maybe you'll end up with a ring, which is great. Which reminds me, I think they gave me a ring for the Twitter thing, and I haven't spent it yet. I should assemble my ships. Figure out who who needs a ring on Team Me. Ah, shit. No! Ah! Ah! Rip. I restart that shit. Yep, they scoodled in. They scoodled on in. But yeah, so that's gotcha stuff. That reminds Mm -hmm. me, though. I should, at least, I still have it downloaded from, because it's, um... (laughs) Um, Yoji is one of those games that is also on Steam. I should, I've had that installed for a while. I should pop it up and test it just to see what Give it's it like. Because that, similar to how I said that, like, oh, this kind of urban fantasy y look for Arknights and stuff is actually kind of appealing to me. <clears throat> like, Ooh, excuse me. Classical Japanese mythology is another thing that appeals to me. 
All right, Lucky, we've been talking about Gotcha for like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think we can move on to Fallen Order and scare yeah, sure. everybody off? Because we're going to talk spoilers. Because uh, you were right. The game is not very long. I beat it in about a week. Yeah. And not like I rushed through that game beat it. Like, I am over 90% everywhere beat it. Yeah. Like, it's it's a fast game. And unfortunately, I think it's got a little bit of the problem where the developers are like, shit, we know our game is short. Let's just let's just make it a little bit harder at the end so it takes a little bit longer. <laughs> um, Because overall, uh, writing-wise, game's great. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the best Star Wars game that has been put out since EA got the exclusive license. Like, like honestly, I tell people like it's a Star Wars movie to me. It really is. No, it is. It's the it's the whole journey. It's it's got all that. Um, and I know there are some people who are like, "Oh man, Battlefront Two has really come a long ways in like two years." I'm like, eh. <laughs> it's it's still ultimately a super casual shooter that will never ever get any depth because seriously, they are not doing all they can. I think the most they did to like expand the game was like oh when clones got added they added like 50 million clone skins and that was it um but the game has no ambition basically uh it still doesn't have like conquest mode where you like play all the maps in order you can still only play certain maps with certain eras which is kind of a pain in the butt and just it's like i like i said i don't think it's very ambitious it's it's still a little too casual and arcadey for me and obviously i get that that's what keeps it approachable to players but that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily generate like long term interest. Also, yeah. it's fucking huge. It's like a hundred gigs every time. Jeez, it wants to it huge. wants to like reinstall them all the time too. I'm like, fuck Battlefront, you're not that cool. <laughs> um Whereas Fallen Order is like, now this is the complete package. This is the story arc, but also it's underlying a good game with plenty of depth to it. Like I'm sh- I know for sure there's some systems I have not even really touched. Mostly because I think it's kind of bad that they put evade and dodge roll on the same button, so I almost always roll, because I'm slapping that button. <laughs> it's not like, like, witch time in Bayonetta is a trigger, so that's, like, that's easy to do, like, ooh, one pull, perfect, perfect witch time dodge. Um, whereas with, like I said, with, with Fallen Order, I'm usually spamming that button and, like, roll. Yeah, no, I had to... I had to get real good at that because, um, fun fact, if you do, like, only the one tap and you do it just right, you do the perfect job yeah. and the enemy slows down a little bit. And there was an achievement for that, so I was like, god damn it. Mm, yeah. I think I got that achievo. Oh, no! No! You're going down! But, yeah, so it's a pretty... Fuck. It's a pretty deep game with some different systems. It's got a fairly robust skill. Like, I beat the game and I'm still missing a couple of skills. I... I don't think I got Howling Pull, mostly because I'm like, why do I want to pull multiple enemies towards me? And I don't think I got the extra range for Lightsaber Throw because I didn't have time. And I didn't get, like, the last Force upgrade. Yeah. That that said, despite the game, especially considering that I got a lot of those extra skill points by exploring all the places and stabbing lots of things, I think the the game does have some problems with advancement. Now, obviously, it's got, like, it does have multiple difficulty settings, and the lowest is story mode, so you could probably set it to casual autopilot and just cruise mm-hmm. through the story if you wanted. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like at more, even at median difficulties, like Jedi Knight, I think, is the actual, the, yeah. f- the first tier that's not like, oh, this is the super easy mode. Even then, I'm like, I feel like there's a couple of things that could use improvement. So, hey, Respawn, if you're listening and you're making Fallen Order 2, which I'm sure you are, because... This game made lots of money and it's actually really good. Um, <laughs> just a couple tips from us. Um, and I'll, Lucky, I want to see what you think about some of this stuff. One, I think, well, it makes sense. It's kind of a bummer. It takes you so long to get lightsaber throw. Because uh, I I felt like, le- well, maybe I should say overall, if I had to say there was one thing that, that really bothered me in game, it was, it's not really the platforming. Most of that's okay, except the ramps are a little slippery. Cal's momentum is a little weird. I went uh, off edges so many times because I well, that's because it's Star Wars out. and they don't have handrails. But yeah, the yeah. the momentum vis a vis like where you're pointing and turning on the slides is a little weird. They probably didn't need to make those as tricksy as they did. Mm. Again, that's part of that. I think they realized their game was going to be shorter, so they stretched it out a little bit. Those really could have just been like automatic transitions with maybe some jumping between segments, you know, like one way mm. transitions. But some of them are more platforming puzzles. But anyway, that's just a light. A light touch that who knows maybe they didn't get the physics to work right. It's weird. Um, the one the one thing that that niggled at me the whole time was creatures. It was animals. Oh, God. So one, 
I don't think there was a boss that was an animal that I liked fighting. Nope. Um, well, no, I take that back. Um, the animal, the fucking Dothamir. Yeah, the big... uh, uh, yeah, the big bat was like once I kind of figured out that that's a that's almost a very scripted fight. He yeah. has one very specific pattern you need to work with. Um, that got better. That's okay, but it still kind of speaks to I think the general problem with a lot of these big creatures is, which is one. Um, all of them have really weird attack patterns. Now, sure, yeah, this it is. is, it's, Fallen Order really is kind of a light Soulsborne game. Like, you may have thought Code Vein was like that. This is like, no, this is even more of a light Soulsborne type game. Um, so I get that, like, changing up your attack patterns is cool, but humanoid bosses had multiple phases and multiple attack patterns, so I don't think you need to get quite so weird with the creatures. Yeah, there's a lot of fauna there, and I'm like, I don't know if I really need all this. Yeah, and the other thing is just, a lot of these creatures were just so meaty, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why it takes me two hit to fucking body a fucking rat. Yeah, um, and they're, they're really obvious reskinned fantasy enemies. There's giant rats, giant slugs, a giant toad thing. The giant spiders I can understand because they were actual giant fucking spiders, you know? The werewolf things, who were the worst on Dathomir. The, they, they designed those guys to annoy you because when you kill them, they get one final swipe out. Yeah. Which hit me almost that. every time. Uh, but yeah, no, like like you said, I it really should not take me two lightsaber sweeps to like like two uh, direct hits to kill a giant rat or a weird slugworm thing. Mm-hmm. Like, and obviously there are abstractions, right? And you could say stuff like, "Oh, well, the lightsaber hurts, so obviously the creature's gonna like dodge away from it." Okay, sure, maybe some of those creatures could be two hits, yeah, but like good. those big troll enemies, of which there are lots, why do they take like five hits or more? They shouldn't. These things should be dead. Like, in Force Unleashed, um, there were some creatures that could take multiple hits. Those were, like, like truly giant creatures, like the bat thing from, from Dathomir. Mm-hmm. That's a big meaty boy. I can understand that taking multiple hits. Uh, Lucky, you've have you platinum for, uh, Fallen Order? Nah, I am literally on the last planet I need. Okay. Do you, do you know if you fight the giant dragon on Bogano or not? Uh, no. It just okay. hangs out in the background. It looks All right, cute. it's just cool. All right. Yeah. But if that was a boss fight like that, I would be like, yeah, that should take multiple hits. <laughs> Fun fact, um, do you know when you're in the underground area where you learn to wall run, the dragon actually looks down at the hole at you while you're doing it? <sighs> Sick. I did not notice <laughs> that. <laughs> I did There's, a, there's another thing. The game is beautiful. The environments are oh, great yeah. and so fun. Uh-huh. It's just the enemy design, like I said, they wanted to slow you up by making you, making you fight like a dozen poison spitting space ticks. Thanks, Dathomir. That's okay. Dathomir. I, I, Dathomir is a sucky planet, but I think that's intentional. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just like, God, Dathomir sucks. I can't wait to get out of here. Fucking space zombies and night brothers with their bows and the fucking space ticks. Uh, Dathomir sucks, okay. everybody. Let's not go back to Dathomir. Uh, fucking... Oh, I totally forgot the fucking captain's name all of a sudden. Grease? Oh. Yeah, Grease. Grease would, ho- would heartily agree with you. Yeah, Gre- Greece is Greece is pretty fun. I think his I think his design's a little a little lackluster. Like, I don't know, like, like oh here. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you have paid attention, but there's he's got a lot of the sameness that a lot of like um, sequel trilogy alien designs are like, where he's like he's slightly short and he has like four arms and he's a little bald. Like there are unfortunately a lot of alien designs that look kind of like him, but are not exactly mm-hmm. the same. So I'm just kind of like, eh, it's a little uninspired, but okay. Eh, it's all right. He's he's funny at least as a character. He's entertaining. I just think yeah. that his his character design wasn't very ambitious, but that's okay. Actually, now that I think about it, isn't Grease like well, except from from what was it, the ninth sister, and whoever you see on fucking um uh what was it uh what was the scrap the scrap the, the scrap planet called again? Braca. Brr, Braca. You don't see aliens. It's just stormtroopers, Wookies, and fucking um yeah, Anna. Yeah, they uh, and they probably saved some on their design with needing only limited amounts of models. Yeah, um, and even then, like the the enemy, like there are a couple of aliens, but they're like they're either Wookies or iconic, and they're pretty humanoid. Um, they're the Knight Brothers who are like Dathomir and Zabrax. But yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, they're Zabrax. But they're just uh... oh look, he's got a spiny head. Mm. Um, even the ninth sister is like uh, I think she's a Dawatin. Which is just like, you're a big humanoid with tusk chin. And also she had a lot of cybernetics for reasons. Yeah. Like, and I think she's dead, but also she could not be because she did fall down off screen. 
Yeah, you throw her into a wall, which, you know, smoke happens, and then nothing. You don't confirm anything. It's, she's just Ninth gone. sister like, defeated. I got her. See her. I killed an Inquisitor. I'm Cal Kestis. I'm great. Look at I'm my gonna go fly my. I'm going to go fly on a bird. There's a lot of flying on birds like Man Kashyyyk. Also, yes, I think the facial animations are a little weird. Like, sometimes <laughs> Cal looks are. like he's got kind of a fat face. And I think with Seer, because you can you see Seer in a flashback in a, in a point, and she looks a little more fuller face. So I think with Seer, they tried to, like, make her look more gaunt in the present to show you that she's been through some shit, because she has. She has. But it does, it makes her facial model look a little weird. Because I've seen oh, the actress who does her performance and did her, her performance capture, and her in-game model in the present definitely looks a little, like, more gaunt and bug-eyed than that actress normally does. Ah. Uh, so I, th- I think they tried to do something, and it's just like, that's just a little weird, because you did do a performance capture. But th- that's okay. That's not a huge deal. Mostly, like I said, the animals is the thing that's just like, they take so many hits, and there are so many optional animal bosses I defeated by just... Walking to the end of the box room, at boss room, and hacking them with terrain because they can't go outside the room. So, <laughs> stab, stab, dodge, roll back. I'm fine. And it's like that's not how this game should be. Yeah. Uh. uh let's see. I'm trying to think of any particular niggles I had. I think Mine- you know, to say the point that I wanted earlier. I think, and I was, I had to describe why I think so. Mm. I feel like you could use maybe a few more ranged or escape options. Uh. Um because, like, everything has physics, so you can literally get fucked in a corner. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if enough guys push you into a corner, you cannot freely roll through them. And Cal has some wind-up for everything he does. Mm-hmm. Um, while lower difficulties do give you more of a window to parry, you still have to physically press guard in time. Because um, Cal has to actually... Uh, that's, a th- that's a thing that I feel like is a little bit of a thing. Do you agree? Where uh, I feel like enemies, especially the later game ones, cheat a little bit. Yeah. Like, um, when you're fighting, like, Malakos and Trilla, and sure, okay, it makes sense, but, like, you cannot hit-lock them out of, hit-stun them out of attacks. Like, mm-hmm. they will keep comboing you, fuck you. But mm-hmm. if somebody tickles Cal, he stops what he's doing to go, yeah. ah! That's a little <laughs> annoying, but that's pretty typical for these games, so I'm not super upset about it. It's just like, ah, it kind of sucks. Uh, I think the thing that actually pisses me off the most, like, particularly in combat and escape, is uh, push is great. Push is awesome. To get the strong push, you have to hold the fucking trigger down, and it takes a second. Yeah, that's what I'm I like, mean. I'm, Cal takes some wind up. He takes a wind up, and I'm like, I like, it's, like again with the empowered slow. I'm like, I need this guy. I need all these people to stop moving right now. But in that moment between me starting my thing and me actually competing it, I've been shot three times and probably yeah. Fucking, I think they um, should. I think Force Unleashed did this where when you start holding a Force Power button, time like slows. Um. Yeah. Just a note for the future, uh, Respawn, do that with Fallen Order 2. Give you a little bit of lag time if I want to choose if I'm going to do a big punch. Yeah, because, like, I really like using um, the Empowered Push because that lets me send, oh, like, no, six yeah, guys. Push is, your, push is your your number one button. Like, slow's cool, but, like you said, it takes a little bit of wind-up to do burst slow when you buy mm-hmm. it. Push mm-hmm. is always useful. You don't... I, I could not count how many Purge Troopers I threw over a cliff. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't want to deal with you. Get away from me. <laughs> get out of here I don't need the force I just need gravity get out of here uh, but if I had a niggle um, this way not necessarily a big one because this is um, me on my personal preference but I kind of want it more um, I guess I want to say action scenes because like here's the thing like when you start off on um, Braga it is you start off um, like it's a really good start like you learn all your platforms you see Cal talking to people. Like, I still like um, another thing that I think is top notch in this game is the fucking dialogue. Oh yeah, no, everybody has great dialogue. The music like, is like, really I great. Remember, like fucking um, Cal. Like, and it's like um, he like I think like at some point like he's like you know platforming and the platform breaks and he lands almost on settlement and then the girl's like, "How did you get here?" And Cal just looks around and is like, "How did you get here?" I'm like, "That's great." Yeah, when but, you're because the game teaches you to platform by you explore an old wreck, basically, which is cool because mm-hmm. it's it's low stakes. Mm-hmm. But oh, that does remind me another minor moment of mine. This might be related mm-hmm. to some of your stuff. There's a couple of segments where you're without your lightsaber in the game. Mm-hmm. They do not necessarily flow the greatest. It's a it's like uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of awkwardness in like maneuvering around. It's like oh, you can't like attack anything. Yeah. They're not big, but that's just like that's kind of minor. 
Um, mm. I think it. I felt it more with like the Venator one, where it's like, okay, it's cool that you're not having anybody attack me, but like, it's it, they. They're basically they're forcing you to run or to mm-hmm. explore. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's 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 a little weird, you know. Yeah, but when um. Are you thinking about the train chase on Brock? Yeah, like, like basically, like once like shit gets real and you have to start running for your goddamn lives, it becomes like full on action movie for a while, and then that kind of pace just stops as you go like as you're like fighting stormtroopers, jumping flames, you know, getting chased, and then you just go start punching lizards and moles, and you're just like, I'm just like, yeah. The game has a couple of scripted action sequences. There's another big long one on Kashyyyk, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um. And the the entire final section, the Inquisitoria Citadel, is just a storm the castle segment, which is really cool. But it was really cool. Um, um, but you're right; the game kind of switches gears to be much more. Here's the thing: I, some people, if you haven't played Fallen Order, you might not know. Uh, it's a super Metroidvania game. Mm-hmm. It's got like all the classics, like oh shit, you found the climbing gloves, now you can climb new shit, or oh shit, you got the rebreather, you can go underwater now, you got the mermaid charm, water no longer <laughs> hurts you, Alucard. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. It's 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 a fun little detail, but it, and it it incentivizes them to only have like five maps or whatever. Yeah. By the way, I feel like there really should be one more planet so they could complete the hex because there's only like I think there's like <laughs> six total. There's like one in the center and then like only five in a ring or whatever. I'm like, mmm, this is not symmetrical. <laughs> but like, cause like you had the escape from Braga, you had the battle on um, Kashyyyk, the fucking bat fight with um. Yes, you don't um, finish the bat fight by actually fighting it. It's you do another. You jump off a lot. Thing. It's fun. I mean, there's a lot of falling, and it's a little ridiculous how much falling there is. But yeah, it's it's cool to watch anyway. Yeah, and of course, a storm in the castle, which had the best um the best uh, conclusion, I think. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. We'll talk about the ending and how they kind of handle that in a second. I think of some of the story stuff. But right now, we're just talking about the mechanics. Were kind of yeah, and maybe that was a pacing thing, right? Like they wanted to focus yeah. on exploration. I feel like every 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 planet needs that climax, but those climaxes are different. Like yeah. the climax of Bogano is ultimately when you open the vault and you do mm-hmm. that whole vision quest thing. That's really oh, cool God. and thematic, and it's so sick. But you're right; it's very slow. It's very dramatic, mm-hmm. right? And not like yeah. flashy action. Um, like when you first, like it's when you first get there, you're like, "All right, this is the thing I gotta do. Let me just wander around, punch slugs and mole rats as I follow this droid around." And don't yeah, get me wrong. Not, I, fucking love- I think it's trying to teach you about the open worldness because mm-hmm. Bogana is a very hub friendly world. But at the same time, you're right. It's it slows your pace way down. Um, and Zepho is similar. I think that's the planet you go next. You can go to yeah. Dathomir, but you'll be hard locked pretty fast because you need the double jump, mm-hmm. uh, which one of our community members, uh, Camper Wayne, complained that you don't unlock the double jump till later. I, I think okay that's with that OK, because it's not the game is not written to require it until you get it right. Yeah, it's like, a little weird uh, for it being so platformer heavy that you can't double jump, but through like through guess, the whole game. But it's it's all right. Like as I said, like I've never like really needed a situation where I needed a double jump where I couldn't, because it was usually double jump was either either locked me out of chest and secrets or continuation. Right. In like, which case, it's like okay, well then you better go back to the planet where you unlock double jump. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. Um, like skill wise, like I kind of wish like there was. T- times to utilize skills more like the yeah fucking, i uh, wish the skill like i was hoping but quickly realized it wasn't that you know how there's like those three constellations or solar systems beyond the points i, I almost yeah. wish there was like oh shit there should be like three more skill trees yeah i know that's what i was expecting too but no because... Guardian and Sentinel, by the way. <laughs> it's really easy guys um but it yeah it's kind of like that's another thing i want to say lightsaber throw i felt was a little a little slow because i'm like god so many of these dumb mobs you want to just i wish there was a little bit more ranged options um yeah like um and like thank thank you lucky for letting me know because i i would eventually got there but like you set me on the right path to exploration because mm-hmm. the the double saber looks cool it's only good for crowd control but boy howdy is it good for crowd control yeah like i i'm pretty sure they tell you at what point you get it but like you never know because um so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a quick i'm gonna do a quick spoiler right here real quick so you start off with a single blade lightsaber and then I guess the... it's optional you optional to get the double sided lightsaber. And then later you get a split saber, which is, you know, two lightsabers in one hand. I don't know that if you skip the double handed lightsaber, do you just get both of them when you get to Ilum? You like, might, sure. because here's so 
you start with one lightsaber, um, and clearly half of it is broken. Um, yeah. it's, you start with Jar Paul's lightsaber, and part of it is broken off, obviously. Mm-hmm. Cause he was a double saber guy, and Jar Paul's a cool guy. I like him. Yeah, um, he was cool. Uh, but so clearly, cause you can tell when you customize it, like, oh shit, the bottom half of this is like broken. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you go back to Bogano after, after push, I think it is. Yeah. Um, you can find, um, Cordova's. Cordova, that's right. I was like, oh fuck, his name escapes me for a second. Uh, he has a very Italian sounding name and he does look kind of like a fat Italian guy. I think it's Inno Cordova, I think. Yeah, like. Inno Cordova. Um, but you can find his workshop and find his hilt, and Cal is like, I'll incorporate his hilt into mine, and it turns your lightsaber into a functional double saber again. <laughs> so you can always keep a piece of him with you. Uh huh. And then, after you break your saber crystal, which, by the way, I was wondering when this would happen, because you told me it would happen. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Co- I completely did not expect what happened there. That was actually yeah. really cool. Yeah, I didn't want, like I said, I didn't want to spoil that for you. Um, but it's if you haven't seen it yet, I won't say it just yet. Like it's it's a moment that is different than you think. Um, mm-hmm. But you go to Islam, you find a crystal. They had a really cool selection mechanism to pick your crystal, um, where you like tilt it through the light. Mm-hmm. I started with magenta, but I decided that was too pink, and I I really like the indigo color. How about you, Lucky? Yeah. Uh, I went with purple. Also, I went a little bit deeper. Yeah. Color. Um, they but... gave you some decent color options. Yeah, but, like, that's the thing, like, I love that scene where you turn on the lightsaber, you, it's just one blade, then you turn on the second one, and then you just split it in two, and I was well, just like, Well, the reason oh! why you can do that is because Seer gives you her lightsaber hilt. Yeah. Um, so then you incorporate hers, so Cal is literally all three of these people. It's yeah, like which, like, and, as I said, I found there was symbolism, that, because basically Cal has had three teachers on this journey, mm-hmm. and he has each of their lightsabers. And they do, and, and boy howdy, because uh, Jared Paul says something really interesting. I think it's, is it in Push, or is it in, the the obstacle becomes the path? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't remember which power that was, but that whole flashback sequence is really cool, as he like, yes, you will fail, you will find obstacles, the obstacles are the path, that is the way. I'm like, oh, damn, that's so cool. But each one of them teaches him things, like... Seer kind of shakes him out of his funk and is like, dude, you need hope. That's important. And Cordova yeah. is the same way. He's, you know, like, failure is not... So they all they all teach Cal these different lessons, and it's really cool for him to integrate them all. Yeah, and at the end of this, um, he goes from Padawan to Jedi Knight. I do think it's a little weird that they did it with an Inquisitor lightsaber, but you know what, Seer? I saw hey, you using Seer, that later. Seer, Seer has... <laughs> Seer's got to work with what Seer's got. Yeah, but also remember that's Trilla's Inquisitor lightsaber, which that was another super cool sequence, which I will spoil uh, yeah. for the audience. But like, so you get you get the MacGuffin, you got the Holocron, you finally got it after you mm-hmm. just had a sick vision quest. Which they don't. I like that they don't ever comment on this, but Cal learns from this to be like, maybe we shouldn't do the thing we're thinking of doing with this Holocron. Yeah, maybe that would be a bad idea. Um, yeah, I love that it's subtle like that. Subtle storytelling, great. But yeah, Trilla shows up like, and she's like, hey, fuck you, dude, give me the thing. And I'm like, no. Um, so you fight her and you, you've you got her pretty good. Like, she's not in this fight. Her AI is not trying the hardest. And like, mm-hmm. there's a moment where you you do some pretty cool moves and you've got her. But Cal has psychometry. He has the special force power to sense the past of an object. Cal mm-hmm. makes the mistake of taking Trilla's lightsaber away with the force. And when he touches it, he gets her PTSD flashbacks. Which I mm-hmm. thought was a really cool moment because I feel like in that moment, in that place, you could have beat her, mm-hmm. but because he touches the saber, he gets temporarily incapacitated, and that's just a really cool moment. And then he passes it on to Seer, and that's a really interesting thing because the the lesson that Seer teaches Cal and that she has to learn herself is that right, it's about the fight, right? We have to we yeah. have to choose. It's all about choice, and so. Seer teaches Cal, but Cal also teaches Seer. He, like, helps her rekindle herself. Mm -hmm. And at the end, she continues to make the right choice and actually kind of gets her connection to the Force back because she's pretty badass. Even though there's one guy who's more badass. Yeah, do we want to... Yeah, so I guess we can talk about that. Like, uh... Well, yeah, so the the climax of the game is, because we've just talked about the first start, is Trilla gets the Holocron, you gotta catch her. Mm-hmm. Um, and Seer is like, okay, we need to go to their base, because I, I know where it is, because I escaped there, and we just saw that flashback. Um, <laughs> so we'll go, we'll both go, you do a cool escape pod drop, that's neat, that's a really cool uh, idea they have. 
um, and you swim in. You go through the whole thing. Seer's there with you. She's kind of your off-screen helping you open doors and stuff. You have your final boss confrontation with Trilla, Mm -hmm. um, which, like I said, that was a little annoying because she cheats a little. Like I said, it wasn't too too hard. It's not too hard. I only had to do it a couple of times. I actually found Malakos harder, but that's because he actively resists all force powers. Malakos um, was an interesting bit. We, we could probably talk about Dathomir. Malakos was, yeah, Dathomir was an interesting segment. Malakos was an interesting character, and I'm glad he was in. It's just his boss fight was a little, it was a mm. little frustrating because it was it was deliberately designed to be a slow slugfest, and it's like, mm. gosh, I wish this was faster paced because it's it's a Soulsborne type game. You will probably die a couple of times to learn because every boss has really unique patterns. Mm-hmm. Um. So it's like, yeah, that's that's okay. It's just, but it's like, man, God, when it takes me so long to get him down to like that last quarter of his HP, that's kind of annoying that I have to start all over again. At least they don't make you repeat scripted segments. Yeah. But after you, you go there, you face down with Trilla, you have your big final confrontation, and Cal puts his saber away. Also, by the way, what color material is used for your lightsaber? I found the bright red one. Oh, um, shit, what was it? It made mine kind of purple. I just, went, uh, yeah, I, just I remember. I think I used that one for a while. I like that it's like it's dumb that there's so many that are brightly colored, but I like them because otherwise you can't see shit in this game. Yeah, see, that's the thing that that's the thing. Like I keep saying, I wish, like I said, you know, different schools of thought, but I wish like different parts actually did. Like, e- e- stuff, yeah, like, um, like I color. chose the emitters. Um, I think it was, uh, is it strength and valor? I picked one of the emitters that has kind of a like a lip or a guard type. Like I used mm-hmm. uh, Jaro Topal for a while because he's got those really long guards, which is cool mm-hmm. and also very visible. So I eventually um, did something slightly different, but still, it's like, you, you want to pick something that actually stands out, because some of those details are just too small to see on screen. I know I was... Not everybody is playing with a giant 50-inch TV. Did Lucky just die mid-thought? Oh. Yeah, so, I, I just said that I, I don't think, ev- you know, not everybody's playing on a giant 50-inch TV to see all the details of your lightsaber hilt. Yeah, let's see. For my saber, I think I went with, I went with Jar Paul's emitters, and then I used in no um cordova's and cersei's i can't remember which one was which but it actually worked really well together and i was like yes all three masters are in my fucking uh saber i will now go kick ass but again like i don't ever fucking see it the only thing i ever see on the reg is my fucking purple ass sabers going whoa, 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 whoa. yeah and but i and so i appreciate that you can pick different materials some of which are brightly colored and obvious yeah. like there's the purplish one there's the greenish one a bluish one there's chromium for max chromed out <laughs> chromium um, and I picked the, whatever the reddish one is, cause it stands out. Cause like I said, it's otherwise hard to see, but so yeah, you, you beat Trilla finally, you know, you have that cool moment where you're like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kill you. And then Seer comes in and like, they have their final moment of, of resolution where Trilla puts down her crazy eyes and it's like, okay. But then it's, it's just like the fucking Rogue One hallway shot where just <laughs> the camera pans up to that weird angle. There's this weird backlighting, and you just hear the breathing. And you're you're like, like, ah, fuck. And just, nobody does anything as this, wait, no, Cal gets one one one-liner, and he's like, this does not look good. And I'm like, shut (laughs) up, Cal. That's not the time for this. But Big Big Daddy V just strolls into the scene. He only says one thing where he's like, you have failed me, Inquisitor, and Trilla only gets out Avenge Us, and then Vader just immediately jobs her. And then Seer freaks out and tries to stab him, and Vader's just like, Nope. And like, and honestly, that could have been it for Seer. You could have been just like, holy shit, did they just do that? No, she comes back later, but like, fuck I love the, I love the moment is like, you don't even try to fucking fight Vader. You're just like, I gotta get out of here. You take a couple of swings and he stops and you know in game that you're like, there's no way I'm fighting this guy because he has no, he has no health bar. Mm -hmm. Vader just exists. And like, you get a couple swings in, but then he grabs you and you have to like aim and pull down, uh, the, like the giant, um, thing. Which, by the way, Vader just catches with his offhand. He just stops it. Like, mm. it doesn't actually do anything. And then he throws it at you and he breaks the fucking door. And then basically you just sprint out of there while Vader throws shit at you. And then <laughs> the scariest fucking shot, you get in the turbo lift, you're working the thing. The camera pans around. You can see Cal. It pans standing behind Cal, hidden from your view, was Darth Vader. And he's just there. And it's like, <laughs> oh shit, open the... And you're like, no! Like, that, much like Rogue One, they treat him like a fucking slasher villain and it works so well. It does. And then you finally get out, pop open, you're on the run, open a door, Vader is there. Boom. <laughs> um, and he once again nearly kills your ass. Um, you have to, like, stop his blow, and also BD has to save you. 
Luckily, Vader uh, does not kill BD, though he cr- does crush his head a little bit. Ah, uh, BD. I fucking love BD. Like, BD's you guys great. don't understand. Yeah, he's so cool. Like, BD is a great excuse for, um, mechanically for Cal to exposit. Yeah. Uh, well, because, well, BD speaks in binary, like R2, so it, it Cal can talk with him and react with him, but you don't have to hear what BD is saying. Yeah. And so, like, Cal will explain things to BD, or he'll react to something that BD uh, says. I do love that B- every time you open a chest, you're not actually grabbing it. BD literally jumps in it and, like, shakes the box around and comes out with whatever you're getting. And it's like, and at the beginning, Cal's just like, BD, what the fuck you're doing? But by the end, he's all like, you find something good? I knew you'd like, jump in there. Yeah, it's it's adorable. Like, you really bond with BD over this. But no, Vader, Vader like, takes your ass out. And he, you're like, Cal's <laughs> like, you will never get the holocron. And he's like, we shall see. And he tries to stab you with your own fucking lightsaber. Um, and Seer jumps in and goes full blood rage, tries to stab him a little bit, tries to crush him. Um, it doesn't work. Like, even, even as, like, Seer's tapping into the dark side and, like, trying to crush him between her hands, she's crushing his head. Vader just slowly stands back up. And he's like, good. And you're like, no. You made a, would have made a good inquisitor. Yes. Cause he's Vader and he's real spooky. <laughs> um, and eventually Cal just breaks the window and swims out. This doesn't even stop Vader. He just starts holding up his hand to keep the water out. That's like, I thought that's, that's going to be the one thing, right? They're going to crush, they're going to crush this underwater and Vader's going to have to like swim. He doesn't even have to swim. You just escape. It's great. Uh, but, and that's the climax. And then Cal breaks the holocron because he realized that that's a bad idea to gather up a bunch of child soldiers, basically, and try and rebuild the Jedi Order. That's not going to work out well. Like, the Zepho Vision quest was real good. No, as, it's really you know, cool, because, like, and you can see, because it starts with the, the Zepho sage saying, like, I have left a record. Our species was super cool, but then we all died because we were dumb. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can kind of see the build-up to it, because you have to go to the Zepho tomb on Dathomir, which is a real fucked up place. Oh, yeah, it is. Um... But he's like, this. I've left this record, learn from our mistakes, we fell into dogma, and then Cal sees the vision, he's like, he grabs the Holocron, he's like, I will train new Jedi, it'll be great. And they all start calling him Master Cal, and you can kind of be like, this is a little creepy. And then it's like, oh shit, the Empire found us, and it's it's bad, it's real bad in the vision. Yeah, like, if the Everybody dies to... or gets captured. Yeah, like the children are fighting, like, they're crying for help. You see them in prison. The thing that, like, got me the most, though, is at the end where fucking Cal is in the fucking... Oh, like, yeah. So what they do is you... Because there's... It's like a walk and talk segment. Mm-hmm. Only you're not talking. You walk into... You're in the Imperial prison, basically. You walk past a set of armored doors, and the doors in front of you slam shut, which is pretty typical. Mm-hmm. And then the doors behind you slam shut, and you're in the dark, and then you're like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here, game? And the game's like, press hold L1 to lift your lightsaber for light, and you're like, oh, okay. And then... Boom, it's bright crimson, which is why I yeah. assume they didn't let you pick a red lightsaber color is just so they could do these moments. And mm. there's some baggage about the red lightsabers, but they could have done a reddish color and not made it like the true red. But still, yeah, but they, they kind of let you with the magenta. But this moment, it really works. It's like, oh, shit. And then you Cal's, see your uniform. You're in yeah, a Cal's fucking, wearing like, an Inquisitor uniform and ultimately walks up to the mirror version of himself standing outside, touching the glass. And Cal's just like, ah, breaks it. <laughs> But it's it's a great segment. Like another segment was like back on um, um Braga when you're walking through the fucking train. Like uh-huh. um at one point the door doesn't open. And so like what the fuck it do? You turn around, you see yourself in the hallway, and you're just like, What? Sure. You turn back around you turn back around again, the other the train's gone. I'm just like Yeah, they did a great because I was I, at first I was like, Oh shit, is I've forgotten his name now, which is sad, but your buddy in the beginning is like, Oh, is he gonna betray me? No, Cal's just having a force dream. Um which is why his forciness is kind of weak at the beginning because he's been suppressing his powers a lot and doing a lot of shit. And then it's like, you have to, I like that they like, he has to repair his training. He has to remember all his training, pick up his old skills. That's, mm-hmm. that's a natural excuse for why he gets, get these powers back, but also they're pretty basic powers. Like, mm-hmm. um, Cal starts with his ability to slow, which is apparently just something he's good at. And, um, since Force Awakens, they have at least established a really cool visual look for slow and stasis and stuff. Like the whole j- jittery slowness. That's cool. He can't quite freeze people in place, but he can make them real slow, which is cool. Mm. Um, and that's it. He has to figure out how to wall run, how to double jump, which they call Jedi flip, and how to 
which is kind of funny. Yeah, Jedi flip a lot. And how to do basic shit like push and pull. Yeah. Um, I do like in all the trainings, he basically harkens back to his training with Jarrett to Paul. And I like that after Dathomir, after that point where you you find things but you can't go anywhere, you the first time you meditate, it takes you into a fucking um you go back and you become fucking young Cal. And yeah, you, you have a full blood it's a it's a dark place. It's making Cal have bad flashbacks, but you have his Order sixty six flashback, basically. Yeah. Which by the way, I will say, goddamn, shout out to Paul. What a unit. What an absolute unit. <laughs> like m- most other Jedi were like Oh shit, my clothes betrayed. Ah, I'm dead. Like, none of them hardly saw any shit coming. Jar to Paul is, is having his, oh shit, I heard, I heard, uh, I heard a disturbance in the force moment. And the captain goes to shoot him in the back, and he still takes him out. And he fights like 50 of these goddamn guys before he, he goes down. You do the whole, you know, you see Jar to Paul on like other side of the glass, just bodying guys. It's just like, yeah. wow. And but you that's around- another, that's another cool throwback because Seer does that later. Where mm-hmm. she just bodies like a couple of purge troopers, which also Axe was complaining about. Oh, why can't Cal use a gun? Because he never picked it up. Seer, Seer uses a gun, and in that hallway fight, her her choreography is so cool because she's like throwing the the double bladed Inquisitor lightsaber, doing all kinds of fun stuff, and she's just shooting motherfuckers. Yeah, that would be another like- cool um, Fallen Order two thing. Is Cal gets a gun? Yeah, like the reason why I say Cal doesn't have a gun is he probably, like I said, he was a young Padawan. He never actually probably ever actually picked up a gun yeah no and as a scrapper he wouldn't so it's just like he has no training he'd be he'd suck yeah he'd suck at it but yeah i think that would be a use because basically like apparently the ship was over braga at the time and right and uh jar Tupal even says that yeah so and because it's actually interesting because i've always been wondering what that scene is when you start the game it always starts off with a ship destroying it and a skate pod flying out and i'm just like I wonder what that's all about you find out what that's about. That was the fucking escape pod Cal was in as he was shot down in the fucking Braga mm-hmm. and lived for like the next five I think it was like five years. Yeah, something, something like that. So, so he's just been, he's literally been hiding, so. Well, what's it that Jared Paul always says, though? It's like, uh, we'll begin with physical physical training or yeah. something. Yeah, Which so. Which it's, it's cool. It teaches you what you need to know about that guy. And then in the vision quest we talked about, Cal has a really weird sounding echo when he starts it again mm-hmm. i will raise them all we'll begin with physical conditioning i'm like that's a little creepy cow yeah but it's right they're basically showing him the hubris it's you at least in this time period you can't build another jedi order because the inquisitors will find you and they will get you because they're uh, the big boss man of the inquisitors is darth vader and he's too swole for you mm-hmm. like it's not gonna like- work you're gonna need some kind of magic destined child to get that guy <laughs> um well, and i will say it? it's it's interesting that there are a lot of parallels because you haven't watched rebels i assume no um there is some similarities because one of the main characters in rebels is uh kanan who is basically another cal he's uh rebels is a little farther down on the timeline but like rebels ends just before a new hope but after four seasons uh so K- but Kanan is is similar as he's a former Jedi Padawan who was rescued by his master, you know, let him escape and has been hiding out and still has his lightsaber and kind of you know, matures and reawakens his force stuff. Um I do think at least, uh, Kanan at least never tries to rebuild the Jedi order, which is mm-hmm. interesting. He's like he's all about laying low. Um but and he kind of learns some things and and stuff, but he teach the pat on which is uh ezra but so there's there's some interesting parallels to a lot of the stuff but i do like that they're like okay vader shows up at the end to make a cameo the emperor is fucking nowhere um we don't even see the grand inquisitor ninth sister mentions him but we don't see him which is kind of cool i mean it would it might have been cool if they brought him back but then they'd have to explain like how we get him I, yeah. and no um you're mostly right axe i think uh there were only like 10 inquisitors and maybe they recycle them a little, but I think in, like, comics and stuff, they've only shown a, a handful. There's just a few, but they're decent. Um, but the thing is, they're not they're not supposed to challenge, just like in the old Legends continuity. Inquisitors aren't supposed to be able to, cha- to challenge the Emperor and Vader. So, they're a little bit scrubbed here. Like, uh, Cal becoming a full-blown Jedi Knight is able to defeat them. Because um, they're just basically 
tainted Padawans and guards and stuff. So they're a little they're a little half assed. Like they're good for uh yeah, they're the elitist mooks. They're like, they're good for like, oh, here's a scrub tier Jedi Padawan or some half assed force adept. We can take out those guys. Maybe if you send two, we can kill like a couple of them. But if you run into an honest to God Jedi Knight, they're mostly just not experienced and, and, and equipped enough to take those guys, especially if they survived Order 66. But, um, that's when, if an Inquisitor dies, that's when Big Daddy V shows up and then you're just fucked because. He was the strongest Jedi Knight, so he just wins. Yes, Malakos would probably... Well, heck, um, he's... The funny thing about Malakos is, especially because he's on Dathomir, I wonder if he was, like, meant to be Maul at some point, but only for continuity reasons. Maul has to live until a certain point where he can die later. It's weird. <laughs> they brought him back from the dead, but they've also killed him again in continuity, so... um, But yeah, Maul shows up in Rebels, and I think he bodies a couple of Inquisitors also. So, yeah, Malakos is about that tier. I'm also yeah. wondering if Malakos is using Asajj Ventress's lightsabers. Because it sure looks like he is. And he is on Dathomir. I don't know if that's where she died eventually, but she was from there, so wouldn't be surprised. He got his weird, crooked lightsabers from somewhere. I like... I kind of wish that we had more developed with Malakos, actually. Yeah, he, there's a lot of... The Force Echo things means there's a lot of lore, basically. Very yeah, you see the lore, but you like, but you don't like directly interact and you like see him once when you fucking. Right. When you get to the cutoff point, you run into him in a robe and you're like, this is a trustworthy old man. <laughs> um, and then after you leave the temple for the first time, after you have your bad touch flashback and you can't get in, he takes off his fucking robe and he's swole and covered in ritual scars. And you're like, dude, the fuck? <laughs> um, and then he's like, join my family, Cal Kestis. We can be bros together. We can lift irons. <laughs> I'll tell you how to get swole with the force. And then Marin is like, um, pardon the fuck out of me. Uh, didn't you tell me that Jedi are murder machines who killed all my sisters and now you want him to be your family? Fuck you very much. And then she summons a bunch of zombies, but when she takes her hood off, she's really cute, so we forgive her for this. Clearly. Um, also she, like, entombs him in Living Rock, and that's just okay, because, yeah, it wasn't my planet. Um, was it my planet? But basically, she summons a bunch of zombies and your lightsaber is broken, so you have to run. This was the segment I was thinking of that was like, this is really awkward without your lightsaber to just run, because Night Sister zombies are really persistent. Yeah, and they have grab attacks. They have grab and they have really, really fast and long reaching rush attacks. Um, it's like, <laughs> so it's like, mm, no, that's, that's a false impression. They're not celibate. They just don't believe in long term relationships. That's bad. Attachment is bad. You can bang it out as much as you like. Um, I'm pretty sure Luke has even clarified that at some point. But anyway, um, but yeah, so you like are introduced to him and in his full swole form, but then you immediately have to fuck off. And then mm -hmm. you come back to Dathomir and you get all the way to the end and then it's just the boss fight with him, which kind of emph emphasizes how crazy and evil he is. But also it's just another fight scene. So it goes yeah. by relatively fast. Yeah, I kind of wish there was a bit more of him, you know, trying to tempt or talk, like, talk shit. Right, like, because Marin does that a lot, where she just yells at you with her spooky ghost PA. It's all like, you Jedi have killed my people, and all that crazy stuff. I'm like, I didn't do shit! But, you know, you get you get a sense for her character and stuff, something that's outside the echoes, right. which is She just talked great. to you, and then immediately after your friends, she's fucking adorable. She, like, teleports next to you and is like, hey, sup? I like it that when you're on the way out, she kind of follows you, but she follows you just by teleporting to points around. And right, and that's another thing that they've done really good. Like, I know the Clone Wars play this up, but the game also plays this up really good. Death, the Dathomir have an understanding of the Force that is completely parallel to the Jedi and really different. Well, they call it... Um, they call it uh, magic with a K. Yeah, yeah. Um, which, But I, I like that they really play up that they're... No, they're totally weird and different. And in some ways, Marin is way more powerful than Cal. But in other ways, like, she... She could not face Malakos on her own in a brawl because that's not what her powers are. Um, whereas Cal can. And I mean, if like uh, if you ever had to if you ever had to punch up um with Marin, she'd probably lose. Yeah. But you don't. Because you become friends. But basically she like they do a little bit of cute flirting. Like and there's mm -hmm. a little bit of tension. It's adorable. Mm -hmm. Um Marin uh, totally saves her ass at the end. But it makes sense because after you guys actually talk about stuff you realize you're basically the same. 
Cal is a, is a lost child of a dead order, and so is Marin. Marin's like, all my sisters are dead, and it sucks. Mm-hmm. Now, she's got shitloads of swole Zabrak dudes to hang out with, but it's just not the same. Uh, and also, apparently, she can just dial up her zombie sisters to fucking mob you. But anyway, like I said, we forgave her for that. It's okay. This Apparently, there's no Jedi rule against necromancy. Mm-hmm. Well, as I said, uh, <laughs> if there's no Jedi order, there's no one to fucking police it. I mean, come on. Well, and also, like I said, I, th- I think ultimately Cal's response is basically just like, that's ah, not my fucking planet. I don't know the rules here. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he says that, that Jedi are peacekeepers and mediators, so he's like, I'm, I'm just going to assume this is part of her culture and respect it. Good on you, Cal. Uh, but yeah, so like, <laughs> you're right. You could, there could have been more, like, there's the echoes, and they're very, very obvious that it was, the, that the Wanderer is, because they name him in the subtitles and stuff, that the Wanderer is like, the spooky guy you're looking for, and he's gone wrong. But it's, it's also kind of like, like you said, yeah, you could have, you could have done him more. Like, you have multiple encounters with Trilla, where she gets to villain bands with you, and you like, build character with her. You understand her really good, and fighting her in the end is a climax. Um, mm-hmm. And it's a great one because you fight her three or four times. I'm trying to think. You fight oh. her once at the very beginning where she completely kicks your ass. Yes. Um, you fight her once on Bogana where you get halfway through before Cal has his problem, which we discussed. And then she's the final boss fight on the Inquisitoria Citadel. Oh, no. She, were- you also fight her. Um, you fight her on um, Zepho? You fight her on Zepho, too. That's right. Because, uh- yeah, I was trying. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's a fourth one in there. Because that's where you like, she almost gets you, but she tosses you back and fucking beats right. you. Right, that's life the when you go up. back to Zepho, you fight her, and she's kind of defeating you, but also you're holding you're, on. You're like going back and forth, but ultimately, when she starts to get the upper hand, uh, Beatty saves you at the last minute. But it's interesting there because at that point, she hacks into your radio, and um, right, which is another she, point uh, you're saying she she taunts you a lot. Mm-hmm. She is your primary voice, a lot like how Marin works on Dathomir. You primarily hear uh, Trilla in that last half of. Uh, Zepho. I I want to say Zepho's kind of we talk like action set pieces. Zepho's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's like it's it's just really big. Like Zepho really could have been two whole different maps because that's another tiny niggle I want to talk about. Is mm-hmm. it's this game's very Dark Souls. There are meditation spots. They're basically campfires. You can rest there, but then enemies come back. You know but what you Dark Souls fa- games usually do? They let you fast travel. <laughs> there is no fast travel. I and really I- wish there was because God, I know there are shortcuts. There's very Dark souls shortcuts, but even then, some of those take time. I just really wish the game would just let me teleport between meditation spots, because, jeez, fuck, there's sometimes I really don't want to platform my ass all the way back. Like, like I said, I'm working on the plat. I haven't done it yet, because I have to literally walk to every point, because one of the one of the uh, trophies is you have to 100% all areas, and there's hidden areas, so luckily they give you, they break everything in sections, like, out of the 10 seconds, like, out of the 10 sections or whatever, like, this one's at 80%, this one's at 90%, so it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, so you can get you, know, you can I, get a feeling for all the the space. Yeah, but I still I still have to get there, and I'm just all like, how do I get there? I'm looking at the map, which I'm just like, it's you know, it's 3D. It shows everything. I'm just like twisting it around. The map is very high detail, but also the maps are huge. Mm. Like, well, that, as a positive, the areas are very big and very well differentiated. Like, Bogano is kind of a, a swampy area that's on these high plateaus that you can fall off these bottomless pits. Um, Zepho is kind of like half mountain village and then half ice cave mining facility kind of thing, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Because Sheik is like, the first half is the Imperial refinery, and then the second half is the Shadowlands, which is like the deep down in the trees, which is really cool. Oh, uh, shout out to the opening segment of Kashyyyk, where you swim up to a fucking AT-AT. Fucking um, get inside That's a good action set piece. It's too bad that that's just at the beginning, and then Kashyyyk is nothing like that for the rest of it. The thing I like about it most is you didn't go into an actual targeting record. You actually hung out, like, back in the cockpit, and you can see Cal and um, BD moving around the cockpit. Yeah, it's, um, it's got a diegetic interface. It's in-universe. Yes. Yeah. And there's even, so, like, little lights which let you know, like, when you've used up your lasers and cannons and stuff. It's great. Yeah. And it's great because I can never remember his fucking name. Um, Saul Guerrera. Saul Guerrera, you know, jumps on the cockpit and, like, bangs on the guns, like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's another fun extended universe cameo where Saw is like, "Yo, are you cool?" I'm like, "I'm cool." Uh, but you also cool. you also like Cal kind of like Saw, but also I, I like that the game gives you the impression that Saw is kind of a scumbag, even if you didn't know that from all the other st- appearances he's had. Yeah, because he's like he was willing to just all like, "Oh, the, Kash- uh, the fights on Kashyyyk Dung, I'm fucking out." You find out that he's kind of fucking brutal and killing people, and also he immediately uses you for his own advantage. He's like, "This is a Jedi. He's super cool. We haven't lost." 
Oh, yep. what, you need to go find Tarful? That's not what I'm, I'm, fi- I'm here to fight imps, dude. Fuck off. He doesn't say that, but you, like, here's my lieutenant. Uh, go talk to her. She'll tell you everything you need to know. I've got Imperials to shoot and uh, uh, tentacles to to stick into people's brains. Oh, that's that's been long established, Axe. That's, the, that's been in novels and, and games for years, is calling them just imps. Um, speaking of uh, imps, though, um, another thing I love, dialogue is great. Fucking stormtrooper dialogue is amazing. They've all. I think in these a lot of these games, they always love to have these little incidental dialogue because that's how kind of the, the game is. Uh, yeah. But but if you there's not true stealth. There's like some segments where you can avoid line of sight to a dramatically appropriate moment, and there's like pseudo stealth and part of death in here. But there's not proper sneaking. No, but like when you're coming up on a squad, you'll usually hear them talking about something. Mostly, it's about how the local fauna sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um. Like, I know a couple, like, um, I remember at one point in the Imperial Refinery, like, I was crawling, like, underneath the control room, and you can hear them talking, and they were saying, like, oh, man, if we do here, maybe we'll get promoted to purge troopers, and the other guy is like, if there's no Jedi, what are we gonna purge? He's like, oh, I guess we'll just have to, have to settle for command then, and I was like, oh, my God. Uh, um, yeah, they've got some other fun stuff, uh, but uh, also, their combat dialogue is great, especially just generic stormtroopers, where, like... You'll body all of his friends and he'll say, like, I'm the last one left. Or I'm like, I can't do this on my own. Um, some will say stuff like, put me down. Other ones will just be like, like, uh, one guy, I think it was in the Citadel, where, like, the last stormtrooper slapped me with his gun and was like, please stay down. As, you know, Vader's hurling shit and killing his own guys around us. And I'm just like, okay, bye, guy. But, yeah, they're like that. It's kind of, it. It's funny, but it's funny enough in a way that's like, you don't feel bad for these guys as you use pull to pull them towards you and just stab them in the chest. Great way to deal with bad, big bad enemies. Just stab them. And I think Lucky has become a force ghost again. Yeah, so we were just talking about dialogue. I was going to mention that um, I like that in like flashbacks and other dialogue, clone troopers are kind of... That, like, you can kind of feel the broiness out of them. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Well, like, Small Cow literally gives one a high five, and they're like... Like, again, like, I forget, was fucking Order 66, like, just something they understood, or was it, like, some subliminal fucking conditioning? Uh, I believe the indication in Clone Wars, which is a little bit of a retcon, is that clones have basically inhibitor chips, um, and so the uh, Order kind of, like, activates their chip, and so they immediately suppress all emotions and everything and go, it's, it's kind of like a, a, com- a, a secret control phrase. Okay, so, okay, because I felt like... Like, it really bugged me that, like, literally one minute, like, fucking, like, Captain is, like, like, at one, one of the trainings, um, uh, the training, um, the final training you have with Jarrah the Paul, like, the Captain, like, shoots at you and is all, like, as part of the training, and he's like, ha ha ha, and I'm like, oh, you, and then, like, a few minutes later, he's literally trying to, sh- like, shoot Jarrah the Paul in the back, I'm like, I feel, like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not entirely okay with this. No, and you shouldn't be, that's really the feeling that it's supposed to invoke, is, like, it, this sucks for them. And I think they yeah, went like, that route because the Clone Wars is very, very character building for clones. So yeah. they really start to feel like people. So it's like, oh, shit, we have to come up with some reason why they would just shoot their buddies in the back. So it's yeah, like it's if, the, the secret passphrase activates their chips. Like, yeah, OK, because if it was literally just like they the, knew this the would legends happen. excuse was that basic clone troopers have no basically no independent actions, so they will obey all orders. But that's not how they were portrayed in, like, the cartoon and a lot of stuff, so they had to kind of massage that a little bit. And I'm, I'm okay with it. Like, I think you could still pull off the, like, post-hypnotic conditioning or whatever. It doesn't have to be, like, a physical chip, but, yeah, it's basically the effect. Okay, so, okay. But, like, yeah, so, like, seeing, like, the clone troopers and, and stormtroopers in battle, too, I actually found this really interesting, is they'll make comments depending on, like, how you're fighting. Like, if they hit you, they'll be like, yeah, I got him. Mm-hmm. Or if you're dodging, he's all like, he's so slippery and quick. Uh, sometimes, like, um, uh, if you kill everyone, the last one will be like, am I alone, guys? Yeah, I mentioned that guys? when you when you ghosted. Like, he's like, I'm, I'm the last one left. Shit. Not, not, he doesn't swear, but, you know, it does that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, it's just like. Also, it's it's kind of funny. We've talked about how stormtroopers are kind of almost comical. And basic stormtroopers go down really easy. They do. Um, and then clone troopers in the flashback center for kind of your bros. Purge troopers who should just be the final batch of clone troopers, I think, is what their lore is. I don't know if they, like, recruited new perch troopers or whatever. Um, They're just really edgy. Yeah. They're, uh, they're like, they're... Jedi can't stop me if I have too many edges. That said, I they're love li- their variety. Oh, um, yeah. Because like, uh, there's, like, yeah. there's the staff, there's the two there's the two batons, there's the axe, and then there's the gun one. 
Yeah, the gun one is interesting because if you try to pull him, he'll fucking just shoot you. Yeah, the gun guy is great. If you pull him towards you, he's just like, okay, I'll get a better shot. Um, and I think he does his unblockable charge shot, too. It is. Um, yeah, it is. So, yeah, they're like, they dodge their deflections and they, like, throw grenades and stuff. They're pretty slippery. I usually like to push those guys off things. Uh, the baton ones and the staff ones are kind of are kind of fun. They, you have a lot of little back and forth with them. And then the, I only fought, like, I only had to fight one axe guy, like, at the very end. Because you can't, it's he's harder to, I, I think, actually, they send out an axe guy in a wave where they close up the bottomless pit in the dojo floor. I think so. There's at least one of those. So, um, I know I fought a couple of them. There, there are a couple in the game. I think they're the rarest, but there's only one you have to fight. Um, but yeah, he, the, they're still pretty interesting. So I love their variety and how they're, they, um, so but they, they are funny where they're just like, I want to see you bleed, traitor. Show me your blood. I'm like, okay, buddy, calm down. You're not even yeah, using harder. a sharp edged weapon. You're hitting me harder. with a pokey stick. Harder. Screaming shit like that. Um, so what did you think about the sudden uh, bounty hunter segments? Okay, so that was the first time that happened to me, which was on my way back on Zepho, which I don't know if that was scripted or not. If that's I think f- it was scripted because that, that's what happened to me. I, okay. I, was, I was in an ice cavern. There was a giant robot. It captured me. I was like, Wait. Oh, no, then. Um, maybe it is scripted to Zepho. But when I was coming back, I found a, I fought a jetpack guy. No, a yeah, I fought back. a giant robot. Um, so maybe it's just the first time you go into one of those spawn points, they stun you. Yeah. Um, that was an interesting idea, and I kind of... Uh, I mean, there's a lot of jetpack guys and a <laughs> lot of robots. Um, so at first I was kind of concerned because it's like, oh shit, they took all my shit. Um, but um, I, I do I do think it was a cool addition. I kind of wish it was a little foreshadowed because I don't even know if that dialogue was required. Like it was 100% scripted or if I had to talk to Grease to, for, him, for somebody to mention that he has gambling debts maybe. I don't know. So like, it's, it's a little it's a little out of left field, but it was okay. And as far as enemies go, they're an interesting kind of recurring mini boss type. They're a yeah. little annoying that they keep spawning it at the same points over and over again, and I don't think they run out of dumb names. If they do, <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Same. Um but they're okay. They just they have some different variety like there's the commando types, there's the jetpack types, the giant robots. They can yeah. work in mix and matches like one I fought a giant robot and a commando type with the shield. I fought two jetpack guys at once, two commandos, etc. Never seen two robots, but I bet it happens at some point. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, so... Uh, like I said, it's interesting, and that segment was kind of cool, because it's like... Because then Grease blows in, and kind of like... That's your big resolution with him, where, like, you learn to trust each other. Because mm-hmm. Grease is kind of weird. Like, he's attached to Seer, who's a Jedi Master, whose ass is getting... Well, former Jedi, who's getting her ass hunted by the Empire. And he, like, does all kinds of crazy dangerous stuff... But also, he's a real scaredy baby. <clears throat> he doesn't like going outside the ship, especially when there's dangerous flora about, even though he wants to collect seeds for his terrarium. Because he likes nature behind glass, okay? <laughs> it's not Grease's accent at all, but that's kind of how he sounds. Uh, like I said, like, um, I, like I said, the dialogue in the game is real great, because at points you can just have conversations where the two characters talk, mm-hmm. and you can start slowly unpacking Grease. <laughs> Apparently, um, on one of the segments, uh, Grease, um, when Grease, like, um, Grease was trying to sell his ship to um, Seer. He was like, "Yeah, it's a it's a luxurious cruise liner," and and it's like this thing is like the fastest ship. And it's just like, "Yeah, that's that's Grease." And you look at the Mantis. Like honestly, I like the Mantis design. The Mantis is a pretty sick design. I like it. I like that also that you get to customize its paint job too. Mm-hmm. Like I like I like its a uh, big engine design, but the engine is attached to the fucking fin. Yeah, and and the the fin rotates when you're not using it. That's yeah, cool. it rotate. Yeah, so the Mantis is cool. Grease is cool. Series is cool. Marin's cool. I haven't named the fucking um little boggy thing. It's a the dog thing that stows away and eats your food and confuses the fuck out of Grease. Uh, but but yeah, um, <clears throat> Grease is pretty fun. Like I said, the writing's really great. Fallen Order is a really really good game. There's just a yeah. couple of a couple of gameplay things that I think could use a little fine tuning. But like hey, I said, I, like you, you knocked it out of the park. It's a solid. What would you say? Eight, maybe nine out of ten. Uh, I give it an I give it an eight point five. Yeah, it's a pr- it's a pretty solid it's a pretty solid attempt. Definitely an like, eight. Honestly, like honestly, like I went into it thinking you know, you know like because some people like we were look, well, looking maybe. when we first saw it were like we're gonna start with a five and maybe a six because we like Star Wars. But I'm like, no, this was even better than expected. Yeah, I was I like, think it, I, I think I was like, this is gonna probably gonna be an okay C game, probably a B yeah. if you like Star Wars. I'm like, oh no, fuck, this is probably a B all around. 
Yeah, like, like for some minus. odd reason, like for some odd reason, like the fucking like the jumping between, like here's the thing: the platforming and the fucking combat. Actually, here's something I want to complain about: the platforming and the um combat sections were too separated. It's true. Like, you don't, and in fact, the game punishes you too much if you move around while fighting. Like, you have yeah. to, like, focus on them. You can get an upgrade to auto-block, but not uh, reflect while sprinting and jumping. Yeah. That's about it. Like, yeah, usually but, like, it's, and in fact, there's some segments, um, like, once you get the slicing tools, you can't slice a door open um, until you fe- defeat all the enemies in an area. Yeah. So, like, I think that's a little, like, one of my, that's one of my... I, I think that kind of plays into your earlier point where, like, there's not enough action set piece scenes, because, like, I was trying yeah. to think, what's the action set piece on Zepho? The first time you go through, I don't think there is one. There's a lot of the cool temple puzzle solving stuff. Well, I think at one point, like, an Inquisitor ship comes down and shoots you off the fucking tomb. The, sar- the <coughs> sarcophagus? Well, yeah, but- that's the second time when you go back. Oh, yeah, Because um, that's time. when you fight uh, Trilla and she sets a trap for you. Yeah, okay. And yes, that has a dynamic sequence where they like blow up the coffin. And you have to learn to pull and climb and mm. stuff. But even then, that's just a pretty quick moment. And then it's back to platforming and puzzle solving. Yeah, because like when I think like when I think platforming games, I always go straight to fucking Uncharted because I love that series. Yeah, and- this isn't quite Uncharted-y because there's not like just big open areas full of enemies with multiple tiers where you're like you know, swinging around to drop down on a guy and then you jump off a cliff and then you sneak around behind that guy. Like, there's none of that. There's none of that. It's all f- it's all f- front-facing combat. Like, you it, can't yeah, areas are fairly that. narrow. Um, if there's platforms, it's just so stormtroopers can shoot down at you and annoy you and you gotta, like, pull them to you or deflect I think the, or whatever. Like, I think the only platforming thing you can really do is you have a... If you jump from up high, you can do a square attack. Right, if you're on you- a high area and you're transitioning to a low area that has enemies... If you're locked on, you can hit square to basically instantly take out or at least seriously hurt that guy. Yeah, but, like, there's no, like, ledge takedowns. There's no, you know, there's no sneak attacks. Yeah, so basically what I would say is, dear uh, Fallen Order devs, if you're listening, when you make the sequel, do a little bit more range stuff. Like, maybe Cal picks up a gun and he can, like, shoot stuff. But also, maybe to complement that, maybe do a little bit of stealth in, like, big, bigger areas to explore and fight in. Yeah. Like, if, if you could, like... Because that's another thing is you never lose enemies. Once enemies start fighting with you, if they don't fall off a cliff and die, they will follow you forever until you kill them <laughs> or platform away. Like they don't, there's no like losing their attention. I think that would be good for them to like lose track of you and be like, where'd he go? And then you pop behind a ledge and stab him or something. And, you know, some people might say, you know, that's not very, you know, Jedi, but I also remind people, you know, there is no Jedi order. You're a fucking. Well, and, and also remember, up- um, they they've got guns and they're going to shoot you like in a new hope the one squish faced alien man tries to like draw a gun and, and obi-wan just takes his hand off like mm-hmm. uh, when when it comes to violence jedi are all about ending that as quickly as possible yeah so, so like i definitely would appreciate some stealth some some uh a gun like i don't need like i don't need like fucking Kyle Katarn levels of gun but no it while I would wouldn't mind if they made a game that was just Dark Forces, that's also that doesn't have to be this game. Like, like honestly, you they've already got a, an FPS ish though it can also be third person franchise. They could just make a a more not even hardcore, but they could make a more Doom esque uh, Battlefront if they wanted. They could take the Battlefront stuff and make it more Doomy. Yeah, just give me just give me a solid like blaster pistol and maybe a blaster rifle and my lightsaber. I'll be happy. Yeah, and, and, and like I said, with that, just, like, make it a, like, maybe make it a button to, like, pull out your, your blaster and, like, free aim, and that's about it. Like, just give me a little bit of control. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Yeah, so, um, I guess, I guess the word I want to say is dynamic, dynamic combat. Like, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Give me more. Probe droids are another thing where that's, that's sucky. Um, <laughs> I just pulled the probe droids and I just threw them. I was like, fuck you. Yes. As I guess, I guess what the game was trying to go for is with push and pull. It's like that's your ranged option, really. Well, so because the other thing that they could do if they were going to do that is they need to do like Force Unleashed and lots of other games and just have random shit lying around that can throw at people. I miss throwing Tie Fighters. Like it doesn't have to be a huge deal. Just give me some rocks or that like that big pipe segment we pull out of the end versus Vader. Like give me more of that shit to throw around and smack people with. Because your only real ammunition with push and pull is enemies. enemies. Uh, now, 
uh, like in Kashyyyk, when you've got those fire beetles, um, where you've got the poison spider things on Dathomir. Yeah, those are okay, but in general, it's kind of like, eh. Like, eh. just, I I can understand if uh, it's, if it's not, like, like, you don't want to fuck up the environments by making them all deformable and stuff or whatever. Okay, cool. But even then, just some scripted boulders and shit. Like, fuck, well, Malikos yeah. does that to me. He pulls a bunch of random chunks of debris out of nowhere and throws them at me. Excuse you. Which you can push back, but that's hard because, like we said, there's a little there's a little bit of English on the push button. Uh, uh, but ultimately, yeah. Uh, let's see. I think we've been talking about Fallen Order for about an hour and a more about an hour. Yeah, we're about. Like, an honestly, hour this one to say. This one to say. This is my final. This is my final thoughts about Final Order. It's a good start. Yes, this is the Star Wars game we've wanted since EA took that license. Yeah. Like this is the first really good Star Wars game that has come out. Um, and like I said. If you really like either of the Battlefronts, that's okay. I've played both of them. I also played both of the original ones. I just these are these were full priced games uh, in the year you know twenty seventeen and twenty fifteen or whatever, and just they don't feel like it. <laughs> like where where's just li- literally just make a Battlefield game and then peel all the skins off and s- slap Star Wars on there. Ew. And that's that's all you really need to like and actually do it good, I guess, because I don't know. I don't think a lot of people bought uh, Battlefield Five. Mm. Rip. Um, I don't know. I've just heard that that Battlefield Five didn't do super great. Oh, well, anyway, talking about um, I guess we're gonna we're gonna put an axe on the fucking Fallen Order talk here. Do you have any like final final thoughts you want to say about it? Uh, no, just overall, it's it's a really good game. I like it a lot. Like I said, I think uh, it's it's a good first start. It has some room to grow, but that's okay. Uh, and it's it's a pretty good experience, and I'll... My phone died! No, rip. Um, though I would say, like, because I mentioned, I don't know, again, I don't think I've said this on mic yet, um, but if I ever needed an analogy for what the Star Wars RPG Force and Destiny is like, I can point at Fallen Order and be like, that, it's exactly like that. You go places, you find shit, you fight Inquisitors and stuff, and you tr- try not to fall down in darkness and stuff. And if Darth Vader shows up, he fucks your shit up. Yeah, I guess I gotta end this with uh, streaming for now. Um, you, also, you did say that at the beginning. Did I say that at the beginning? Okay. Yeah, you did. But, um... I'd, we had a little bit of pregame because I had eat some Pop-Tarts, so I'm like, did I say that on a mic or not? I don't know. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Does it make you want to play, um, Fantasy Flight Game Star Wars more? Uh, yes. I have been going <laughs> through my stuff and been like, oh, shit, I need to make sure my many, many documents have all the Clone Wars stuff. Because I think at, at this point, that's still what I want to do is I either still want to run a Clone Wars game because they give me all the material for that, or I want to actually go back and run straight Force and Destiny again. Because we had a fun little campaign of that that lasted, that died suddenly because people were bad at communication. Yeah, my bad. Also, Ron's bad, but he'll never admit it. He's probably forgotten about it by now. He has other stuff to probably. talk about. Yeah. Um. So we're going to talk about a little bit more about video games and particularly how... Um, 2020 is the year of delays. Yeah. But good delays. Yeah, um, hopefully. So we've hopefully. been getting a lot of video game news. I think chronologically, as in when it's happening, the soonest, uh, February, uh, Nintendo has announced that's when the final part of this DLC pass for, uh, Three Houses is coming out. Mm. And they kind of had a little trailer for, um, uh, what's the actual DLC called? Is it Abyss? Is I think it it's just Abyss. four? I don't I know. It might just be called four. Uh, um, but uh, basically, it's a side story they advertise. There's going to be four new characters, at least, that have been like mined out and stuff, and that might be all. Um, there's a, and they say it's a side story, so I assume it's a kind of thing where you just do it no matter what route you're on, and maybe you get to keep the characters after. Um, that'd be but, nice. Uh, basically, below the monastery, there's the secret abyss land that is full of abyss, and there, there's the secret fourth house, the Ashen Wolves, aka um, our official. Our official Discord community headcanon, uh, the Trash Pandas. Because <laughs> they're just trash people living in the sewers. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you get to show up, you get to recruit them. The DLC has shown all four house leaders in it, possibly as playable units. So it seems like it's going to be kind of a weird standalone thing. Um, now, there's a couple of interesting things to note. Uh, first off, hey, if you wanted more male romance options, the Ashen Wolves leader, Yuri, uh, goes both ways. Uh, Hoppy does not. Uh, Sadly. Well, that is something I have been saying. For as much uh, girl-on-girl action is, your male-on-male options are kind of weak. Yes, they were mostly old dudes. Now you've got Yuri, who everybody immediately loves. He's great. He's I'm super still mad. purple. I still am mad about Claude. Well, who knows? Well, maybe they patched him in. I doubt it, but whatever. 
I don't know. Three Houses is super successful. Um, they that was the other big news out of uh, what about Nintendo was um, Smash reveal its final DLC past fighter for this pack. Uh, they've announced they're doing another one. Is Byleth um, yep. prompting many many cries of hose mad? Um, and many people many because many people are mad. Oh, so mad. The tangentially, I'm understanding this. This the general Smash community is a very broad and um vocally contentious group yeah they have as a community they have lots of opinions and can be very sassy about them and toxic so there were many many sassy sassy opinions about uh smash um including some people going another fucking sword but no uh byleth gets to use all the relic weapons which is cool and has led to many jokes about byleth uh borrowing edelgard's axe at least but yeah, so there's a little bit of flexibility here. There's some, uh, there's going to be a new stage and there's going to be a new song that's Fire Emblem focused, obviously. But so obviously, Three Houses is a pretty big fucking deal. Mm-hmm. So you never know. I'm assuming they're not going to make a sequel, which I doubt because somebody brought up there's like four routes, which is not going to make that work. I'm still waiting for my Golden Route DLC. That's all I um, want. But okay? unlike Breath of the Wild, where they decided after like two DLCs to be like, oh shit, we should just make a sequel, because we've got a lot of ideas for this setting. Um, I think Three Houses will not go that route, so they could easily have a second DLC pass and have a second season of DLC in the year 2020. We'll see. Um, but, so we got four new characters. Uh, Yuri, Hoppy, Constance, and Brrrrrr. Brrrrrr. I don't remember. Uh, Balthus, Balthesius, Bathathamuth, Burlyman. Um, Ballman. And they have very interesting support lists. So apparently Yuri is a ladies' man because he's like got like Dorothea, Berna- Bernadetta, Ingrid. Like he's got a lot of ladies in his setup. Uh, and the rest are like vaguely themed to each of the house. Like I think Constance has a lot of black eagles in hers. Uh, and Hoppy has like a couple of the the lions. And big big man Bother, uh has like Claude and a couple of other. Uh, golden deer one in there so that's interesting that's an interesting concept they got going on there uh which means that you if you want to see their full support lists you have to play in multiple you presumably have to play in multiple routes to actually have all the leaders um but the really interesting thing was this teased the new classes because we get to see based on icons and some of the animations so uh bartholomew whatever um he is a war monk and yuri is a trickster which is apparently a um, and they use the same icons from Awakening, I think, which is how people identify them. So, Trickster is a thief who uses magic staves, I believe. That's and neat. War Monk is a punchman who uses magic staves. So, I'm, I'm because a staff is an accessory, I'm really interested how they're going to do that. Is War Monk going to just be punching, but with magic? And then, like, how is Trickster going to be different from, say, Mortal Savant? I'm curious. We'll see. Um, will you be able to melee and magic earlier? Um, the girls, I think, were the bigger reveals because Hoppy was some kind of other advanced horse-based magic class, and Constance was a dark flyer. Yeah! There was much rejoicing. So, yeah, that's at least four new uh, classes, which are presumably going to be available to everybody, um, because none of the new, new kids start, um, in a new class. They are starting classes noble. There's been a lot of data mining. But that's pretty interesting, um, and I'll have time to play that in February, because, so the delays... It started mm-hmm. with Final Fantasy saying, hey, we want to make sure we get a couple of polish. We're going to delay the game a couple of weeks. Uh, what was the old date? Was it like March 31st? It was something like that. It was the end of March. And they're like, okay, it's going to be April 16th, I think they said. Which to me caused me immediate crisis because I was like, or was it like the 10th? And then Cyberpunk was the 16th. And I was like, shit, that's only six days to Cyberpunk. Um, but don't worry, <laughs> CD Projekt Red solved that problem for me. Mm-hmm. Because then a couple of days later, they announced, hey, BT Dubs, um, the game is mostly done, but it's a really big deal, and we want this to be our final crowning achievement for this generation, so we'd like to take a little bit to polish it. We're going to push the game back to September. It's like, wow. That's a big push, but okay, sure. I want that game to be great, and I'm like, <gasps> oh my god. If you're just taking oh, a couple extra months to polish it, that's that's pretty good because I'm used to some of these big RPGs being kind of glitchy. And so I'm like, that's fine. Find those bugs, solve those problems. Uh, I'm not sure what final fantasy is going to do with just an extra couple of weeks, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know if they put this in fucking 
but yeah, so the, at, at first there was a crisis, which was like, oh shit, uh, Final Fantasy and Cyberpunk are now really close. And then it was like, no, they're not. Never mind. Um, so that's really interesting. I'm okay with both of these. I'm still locked into my pre-order, and they're, but they're more spread out now, so that's fine. Mm. Yeah, and now my, I'm not maybe won't die in a. Oh uh, well, yeah. So this completely frees up March, I think, for Persona Five Royal, which I was like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to pick that up and launch. That's close to new games, and I'm like, oh shit, no, it's not. Unless they delay that, but I don't think they will because they already offset the, you know, it's not a development delay. The reason why it's not out now is because they're recording and translating text for it. Twitter, why won't you let me save GIFs? I don't know. Twitter's weird sometimes. I don't know if anyone's posted this, but I'll post it in Patreon chat and I'm why I'm mad that I can't save. Is it the one you just retweeted? No, that's a video. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, this. I think I saw that before. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, uh, but no, yeah, so the, delays yeah. are okay so long as they're not shitty. You know, there's that there's that classic quote about a delayed game is delayed until it comes out, and then a bad game is bad forever. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, sure, fine, that's okay. I'm already locked in on those games. I know I'm gonna play them. It's sad that like September feels like a long way, but I'll live. It's already been a million years before this game came out, so yeah, a little bit more time is fine. Like on another said, like it's not as bad because here's the weird thing. Game game releases are weird. Like there's like usually three big um release calendars. It's um spring, it's winter, it's winter, spring, and fall. Like that's how it always is. Almost nothing ever comes out in summer. So um I'm fine with it because as I said I don't think anything's coming out in the summer that I'm necessarily wild about. I don't think. Yeah, I have to. Huh. Let me look at the Amazons. Which they they sent me an update about Final Fantasy. I don't know if they've sent me an email telling me that Cyberpunk's not going to come. Uh, my original pre-order of Cyberpunk's not going to arrive when they said it was going to arrive. But let's see. Um, so Persona 5 Royal, which I've got the Steelbook uh, launch edition sitting in my wish list. That'll come out the 31st. What else is coming out? Uh, when does... Oh, I don't even know how I got this sorted. Where's... Watch Dogs. That's... Oh, they don't know when that's coming out. That's just too late. Okay. Because Amazon has Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines and Watch Dogs as, like, listed as December 31st this year. So it's like, oh, you don't know when those are actually coming out. Okay. Ah, uh, Sweet Clears did do something for fucking Madoka Magica. Yes. Sorry, I'm on Twitter now, so... It's okay. I'm just thinking about stuff, because I... Fallen Order, you were right. That did not take that long to beat. So it's like, I guess I should finish up Borderlands 3, but then I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do until that DLC comes out in February. Like... Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is out, and it sounds like it's really good, but at the same time, I don't feel a burning urge to play that. That's just like mm-hmm. a sometime game. Uh, mm-hmm. Modern Warfare is still out of stock on Amazon, and uh, <laughs> I have a lot of Amazon credit from the holidays, so I'm like, I'll wait. I'll live. You know, it's it's already been several months since that game came out. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm fortunate, I because I said I like Platinum, I like, uh, Platinum games, and I'm working on Jedi Order. I've also been playing Monster Hunter with people. Yeah, you've so... been doing a lot with the community. Mm-hmm. I think I just need to work. Like, let me see. What's in the Switch? Anything on the Switch? I know um, Mar- uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions has apparently come out suddenly, and I forgot about it. Uh, like, I don't know if I want it because, like, I said, usually censorship is not a reason for me to not play a game, but the fact that I know that it's censored kind of bugs me. Sure, fair. And, like, I don't, I don't think I felt super... That was just a casual thing. Right now it's full price, so I'm like, nah, I'm okay. Like, I don't know, like, I do want to play it, but it's just, like... Uh, uh, I can pick up Astral Chain, that's uh, what right now. Astral Chain is fun. So is Octopath Traveler on the Switch. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that because... Well, I don't know if we'll talk about it or not, but I'm still writing Gen Sekai, and I've been doing a lot of that to the Final Fantasy XII uh, remaster soundtrack, so I'm like, fuck, I want to play that game again from the beginning. Because oh, the there's something wrong with me. was really bad. I, that's what I've heard, but I don't know anything like specific details. Yeah, we don't know the details. Uh, and Super Mario Odyssey is still sixty bucks. I'm considering getting Smash, but I don't know. Smash is also full price on Amazon, and then I because uh, Byleth's in it, I would want the DLC. So I'll maybe mm-hmm. give that one a wait. Yeah. Ah, heck, fuck! I, I got I got a backlog of stuff I can work through. It's just you know I'm not in a hard rush. Um, I'm just gonna. I think I'm gonna use this opportunity to have a good time to be slow on games and like do that stuff I've been saying I want to do. Where I'm like, fuck, I want to stream AC7, Ace Combat Seven for the channel. I'll like finally pick up the DLC season pass for that, and you know, 
But I, I just, because I like that game a lot, and I always wondered if I wanted to show it off, I'm like, yeah, I do. I do think this game will make a good game to stream. I can, like, do maybe a couple missions of stream and get through it pretty quick. I'm not going to start a brand new file, so I'm going to use my super sick planes and weapons. Because that's, this is not some kind of challenging stream. Um, but also, it's been long enough since I played that, like, I'll have moments of, like, oh, fuck, yeah, that happened. That's cool. You know, that kind of, that, it's good to put a little distance on games sometime. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like I said, I'm like, fuck, I want to play Final Fantasy XII again, and I'm thinking to myself, can I stream that? I know, I know physically I can stream it. I actually have some test streams on the channel now. Um, they weren't with any mic or anything, that was just, will this stream okay? But I'm like, can I stream this as, like, will people actually watch if I, like, play Final Fantasy XII for hours? Because I will, kids. I will. I'll get in there, I'll set up gambits, I'll unlock license boards, I'll hunt marks. (laughs) <laughs> I I really like twelve. Okay, it's it's it. I don't know why I like it so much. Part of it might be because it's heavily it's Final Fantasy loves Star Wars, but twelve is particularly influenced. Um, so I don't I don't know if that's why, but just I like it a lot, and I I I I'm okay playing that game over and over again. Uh, but yeah. So Lucky, what are you what are you doing in game stuff? Are you just gonna focus on platinum and Fallen Order and then uh, hunting monsters? And then probably hunt monsters. Like I said, once I beat Fallen Order, I might go back to old games because I still haven't beat Valkyria Chronicles Four. I still haven't. Mm. No, like, I haven't either. I, but that's that's for me. That's a frustration thing. Yeah, like as I said, like I've been looking at my old games because as I said, I just got a like got a full time job, so now I have less time to play games, and I also need to save money so I can fix my life. Correct. And, <laughs> so mm, I gotta Battle be careful. One is in stock on Amazon. It's only like thirteen dollars. That's a that's the problem with Amazon, right? Like, Amazon's a dark power where it's like, in two days, I can get you a video game you like for $10. I'm like, mmm. <laughs> Lucky and probably also, wants me to buy Battlefield 1 because then I will definitely want to at least write more Mages of War. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, so video game wise, like, actually, um, actually, this is an interesting set. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, I'm going to work on just beating what plat- beating and platinum uh, games I have. Because for some odd reason, despite like um, uh, um, me and Omega, you know, we're friends on our PS4, so I can see his fucking trophy level, and it's higher than mine, and that annoys me. Even though I don't platinum a lot of games, um, yeah, and th- this is the reason why it, it bugs me. I'm like, I have like 11 platinum trophies. How, yeah, I think oh, that reminds me, two. Lucky. Did you do your PlayStation Year in Review? Oh no, I haven't actually. I have. I, I saw I saw you do it, but I wasn't sure where to do uh, it. It's on there. You might have to Google it. Cause I had to, I couldn't find like a share post, so I had to like pull yeah, it. Yeah, hang on, let me just see. Well, it uh, should be in my media tweets. Yeah, I'm gonna pull that up. So, um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I truncated I'm, it to the to the good stuff, but I will recap for the uh for the show in case you don't follow me on Twitter. Um, I played 30 different games last year, and it's got my top three games. They are Kingdom Hearts, uh, 1.5 plus 2.5 remix, 181 hours played. Shocking, no mm-hmm. one. Uh, Death Stranding number two, 146 hours played. And Kingdom Hearts 3, 59 hours played. And I'm like, nope, not surprising. Guess what my top genre was? RPG. All right. Okay. So, oh, wait. Uh, that's the wrong password. Was that the right password? No. Yeah, that. you got to remember your... Which was... So, okay, so if it's not that... Mm, you got to Try that one. one. Wait, is it that one? Oh, wait. Wait, no, that was, it was that one. Okay. Oh, did All right, we, so. did we, I talked about it on the Discord, did we mentionify that, um, everybody make sure if you've got PS Plus to, if you don't have it already, to go in there and, uh, pick up the Nathan Drake collection just to add to your library? Oh, yeah, that's good. Because, uh, it's on there, I made sure to do that the other day. Yeah, so total, apparently, R- according to PlayStation RPG games, I played four different RPGs, I got 149 trophies, and I clocked in 329 hours. I don't know which RPGs there were, but there's a lot. Uh, I have over 5,000 hours of games and earned 436 trophies last year. <coughs> All right, so let's see here. Um, I pulled up mine, and I've played 24 different games. Top um, games is number one, Death Stranding at 188 hours. Two, Conan Exiles at 152 hours. Number three, Division 2 at 124 hours. My talk genre was RPG with nine games, 154 trophies, and 759 hours. I clocked in 3,891 hours of gameplay throughout the year. I played, I played 197 days, uh, 76 hours online. <laughs> Longest gaming streak, 24 hours. 
Nice. I'll look that up in a second. Hold on. There's a. I gotta write down the special code they gave me for like a theme. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not that bothered. It's just a special wrap up theme. I'll just back out of here and see. So it's funny you mentioned Conan Exiles because that was my most online game I played with PS Plus with 24 hours played online. Yeah, my uh, title for 2019 is Action Hero. So let's see. I played um, 21 hours was my longest gaming streak. And I played 55 hours online. So you, you can kind of see the differences in how me and Lucky play stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was your trophy number again? Uh, uh, I think I had like four more than you. It wasn't that many more. No. So uh, I have zero plats, but I have a shit have, of bronzes. Yeah, let's see. I have one plat, 16 gold, 46 silvers, and 372 bronze. So I have more bronze trophies than you. I wonder if that means I'm dipping into more games on like PS Plus and stuff. Well, yeah, because uh, yeah, I think you play like six more games than me during the year i think like literally most of those are fucking kingdom so hearts my my title is not showing but i'm assuming it's rpg related because i got a fighty guy with a helmet that's probably action hero like me oh it is okay it loaded finally i had to scroll down action hero okay. i'll just tweet the full thing now while i'm doing it i might as well too but uh yeah, sure so that's that's fun that's that's always cool i love those stats to like check stuff back and yes i do play lots of rpgs though i'm not shocked that death stranding it was a lot of hours, okay? It was. And uh, guess what? RPGs are going to win again this year because there's going to be uh, Cyberpunk, Final Fantasy VII, and Persona th- uh, 5R, which I'm guessing is going to be my top three this year. <laughs> Un- uh, like, un- <laughs> unless Final Fantasy VII Remake is, like, somehow a-, a-, a short experience. There's no way, dude. <laughs> Lucky found a funny video on Twitter. <laughs> I can't. Don't I stop. Don't for patrons. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, there's a dog just jamming out. <laughs> He's having a great time. <sighs> okay, I'll calm down. All right, I'll and we're down. about two hours. Uh, but yeah, so that's fun. PlayStation stuff. Games are cool, but. Yeah, oh, I that's think... right. Xenoblade Chronicles Two should be coming out on the Switch. I should see about getting that. Mm-hmm. So I'm that I'm out? I'm gonna go either go back and touch up some old favorites for the channel and like or like I said, just work through some old shit. Um, because I think Pokemon's probably gonna be in a bit of a holding pattern until the DLC comes out. Because there's not much to do besides just keep checking on my Vaporeon and my Ditto because I caught that motherfucking Ditto. Uh, and just see how many Eevee eggs I can get and go nuts. I got a Pichu. Like, there's a, lot, there's a lot of fun stuff. I, I like Pokemon a lot, and I'm okay with the DLC plans, but at the same time, it's... I, I People are right if they say that it kind of runs out of stuff for you to do, because once you get through all the story, um, once you've caught your Legendary and you beat the champion, there's literally nothing to do but do the Battle Tower. Or just I think that's, fight raids. I guess that's the reason why people always just come up with weird shit to do. Yeah, I think so. Like, but I like... in some In some generations you could like rematch people they would like call you on your phone maybe you're just biased because gold and silver was my first serious pokemon game like i think i got it i was i had played a little bit of like red or yellow but about that time gold came out so i played it um but like i i just miss a lot of features like that like true night and day clock phone the phone system and stuff because like you have a rotom phone and you call people oh fuck you're right quad that's the thing i should that's the thing i'll be doing too is Remind. That's going to come out this month. Yes, I shouldn't forget about that. I'm sure people... There'll be a fucking tweet explosion when it actually happens, so I'll, I'll make sure to do that. <laughs> tweet explosion! Uh, I'm probably not going to get it immediately. As I said, um, um, Kingdom Hearts 3 is definitely higher on Omega's list of likes, but as if if I understand Remind right, it's going to fix some things I might have had some issues with, so... Mm-hmm. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, you'll get there eventually. Mm-hmm. Ugh, but yeah, so... Vigi games. That's about it. I'm still, like, gonna wait until Amazon has Modern Warfare back in stock to play that. I do want to play it. Oh, I'll get let's to see. it. It's not, I don't, like I said, there, there's some games that I'm like, this isn't, this isn't an urgent play, right? Like, I'll, I'll get to them eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, you know, figuring out what's, what's the right time to play what. Yeah. So, uh, there's one thing I guess I could talk about unless you have anything you want to mention. Uh, not really. All right, so Lucky's going to go ahead. So as I mentioned, I got a full-time job. So Lucky is now online a lot less. 
Um, I got a job at Goodwill, um, but not like a Goodwill store. I got a job at a Goodwill warehouse. I actually work in their online sales department now. It's kind of great because I work back in the media department where we basically sort all the media we go through. And I love and hate this job because um, on this job, I have gone beyond shook. I have gone beyond vibration. I have reached fucking high frequency oscillation. Um, because through my, like, I go through like hundreds, probably th- almost thousands of books a day. Well, not books. I should say media a day. And media includes cassettes, vinyls, um, CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays, Books of all varieties, including like comics and manga, um, VHS. Did I say VHS? No. VHS tapes, and you know, little names there, and video games. And I basically get to see them all as they're going through. And I've gotten shook at some of the things I've seen. I've seen copies of Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, Parasite Eve Two, Tekken Three, Shaq Fu on the Genesis, Street Fighter Two for the Super Nintendo. Silent Hill 1, um, and just others that I just can't think of at the top of my head. I've seen books. I've seen, like, the complete series of Artemis Fowl. I've seen Harry Potter. I've seen the complete series of fucking Twilight, Fifty Shades of Grey, like, Dresden Files, um, um, other things. I just see all these books, and it shakes me a little bit because these are all things that people have donated and say, okay, this I don't want anymore. And... To me, I'm a little, like, I'm distressed over this because I look at some of these things, I'm all like, I would never, ever get rid of this. And, like, I can't, like, I don't know the reason why a person got rid of it. Like, I can't. I can't. I can't assume that. Like, like I don't know. Maybe, right. like. And, and you know, some people are wired differently. Like, talking about, like, physical sets of books. Like, fuck, there's a lot of Dresden Files books. If you're, like, we love those books. But mm-hmm. also, I listen to them, so. Yeah, like honestly, I, I, like, I can see somebody going, "Fuck, I don't need to own this many books of this." I'll, you know, I've got them in Audible if I want to just go back to them. Mm-hmm. But like, I'm also a person who likes, like, as I said, like this is my collector's mindset. I like having physical copies, even if I don't necessarily touch them or use them. I like being able to look over and be like, "That's a fuck ton of books." Fuck yeah! That's why I have like an entire shelf of fucking D and D books, even though I have the PDFs. And when I need to go look up something, I go to the PDFs. I just enjoy that fucking sight of bookshelf o books. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's enough. They, I was talking to pe- the people, and it's like, yeah, we sell this shit on like um on Goodwill doc- like shopgoodwill.com and Amazon. I'm like, I'm gonna go look that shit up later. I might buy it. Right. Because... I, w- I I even said this. I think I joked. How much of your paycheck is going back to just buying the shit you find and sort? Yeah, it might. might. Well, because like because like then I started had like actually had started started having like real fucking thoughts. I'm like. Oh, yeah, because I remember, um, because uh, three of the games I found for PS2, I found Kingdom Hearts, fucking Jack 1, Jack and Daxter, and Jack 3. And I'm like, By the way, my immediate response was like, I love the story that's told here. Jack 2 <laughs> did not show up. That means either somebody <laughs> loved Jack 2 so much they don't want to get rid of it, or they've already gotten rid of Jack 2. <laughs> Both are interesting. Hey. Yeah. So I was like, because here's the thing I know, because I know um both of the both of these games, they have fucking, like, PS, uh, like, Jack has the Jack and Daxter collection on the PS3, I think it is. Is yes. it? Or is it PS4? It's yeah. on the 3. So, it's not on the 4, yeah, which is sad. Yeah, on the 3, so it's like, technically, I could get all these same games on a more um, current, like, on a re- more recent system, and I don't think necessarily I'll be missing out on anything, so having the PS2 versions isn't necessary, necessarily needed for, you know, quote-unquote collection reasons. I could just get the collection. Right, and that's the thing a lot of people do is as they buy newer games or transition systems, they get rid of old stuff. Yeah, I so personally like, still own most of my PS2 games, even though I haven't had a working PS2 for years, because one, they're not worth any fucking thing, which is probably why these games ended up at Goodwill rather than a GameStop, because somebody was like, you're going to give me how much back for them? Fuck you, I'm just going to give them away. Well, it's well, fun fact, you, well, <laughs> Goodwill, you can fucking get donation credit and put that on your fucking taxes and be all like, I'm going to get more money out of this anyway. Yeah. That, I mean, I can see why people would do that, because GameStop doesn't, having actually traded some games into a GameStop, they're bullshit with that. Yeah, they are. They're like, your games lose a lot of value when you buy them, kids. It's it's Yeah, true. basically, you can um basically title up by how much it would sell for, like how much you get from a retailer, and put that as your donation, and be like, boom, I just donated this much money. Uh, But yeah, I own lots of PS2 games just because they're not worth getting rid of, and whatever. 
Someday I'll have a working PS2 again, if I have to. Or maybe the miracle will come true and the PS5 will have full, complete backwards compatibility for five generations. Maybe. Fingers crossed. I hope so. I at least know that for sure they're going to do four backwards compatibility, which is going to be great. Uh, but yeah, so these things end up online. Uh, All right. I captured some of your scrabbling noises. Sorry, I got some tax information I'm looking at. That's cool. So I was trying to prompt you to talk more about your Goodwill job, but you were dead. So then I was off dead. mic, I was talking with the audience about backwards compatibility shenanigans. Because, like, uh, yeah, so- the PS3's got some pretty different hardware architecture, but I think the theory is that it would be, like, what Xbox was doing for the Xbox One. They've stopped, but that's probably because they've got a new system coming out and they want to focus on that. But where they would, like, add certain games to their backwards compatible library. Um, But just, you know, if they could get, like, one and twos in there, mostly twos, because I own a lot of those. I didn't have a PS1 on my own, and so I only own a couple of games on it. Uh, but well, I, said, I own a first gen PS3, so I got that fucking backwards compatibility. Yeah, I know, I know, mine's here. broken. Now my PS2 is broken, and now my second PS3 is not broken, broken, but it's got a heating problem that I can't do anything about with my current entertainment setup. There's there's nothing I can do to make it cooler and better ventilated without like stinking it out in the middle of the floor where I'm gonna fucking kick it or something, <laughs> trip over it and die. But um, yeah, so. Yeah, so it's interesting because, like I said, most of the video games, they don't, like, um, things are separated into separate categories at my job. So, like, there's, um, like, there's a bin for, like, it's going to be sold at the outlet center, which is at the warehouse. There is a side for a bit. It's going to be, like, sent to other stores to be sold. There's a section to be where it will be sent to, um, online sales, where it'll sell online on, like, eBay and, um, and, um, Amazon. And then there's um there's two more places. There's a there's a section where it's um put in well there's three more. There's a part where it's sent to um book this is for books books in particular where they're sent to a books wholesaler and it's literally just a giant dumpster that we just fill with books that like don't aren't like worthless, but no we don't goodwill don't think think that anyone's gonna fucking buy them. And then there's um res- um just uh books that are just um gonna be fucking um sent to a recycling center and then there's one more section of for media where it's just going to the fucking landfill that section is literally filled with cds cassettes and vhs VH, vhs tapes ah dead media dead media and like i see like a lot of like a lot of, like i see a lot of star wars i've seen like so many um i've seen so many of those vhs star Wars trilogy boxes like i see at least four or five a day yeah, like, I own one of those VHS boxes. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we have any working VCRs in this place. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of any... I've seen, like, several versions of Cats. I was like, well, this is Cats on VHS. This is Cats on... Ah, fucking, the 1998 uh, Cats, a.k.a. The Good Cats. Yeah. By the way, uh, that's we're not going to talk about Cats the movie because I don't think I've ever seen us, and I don't think we're going to. But uh, I have seen uh, I have seen uh, Broadway cats, though. Oh, hey, VHS. so have I both on VHS and I saw and it wasn't the actual Broadway, but I've seen an actual performance of cats in person. So uh, I'm sorry, guys. I like cats and I'm not going to stop. I like, yeah, I like cats, too. I'm I also like, like the original T.S. Eliot book of poems. I like cats. OK, not like capital C cats, but I like little C cats. So he just likes cats. Uh, but I've, I've heard that the, the, the movie version is kind of a clusterfuck because it does the, I, I, the movie musical thing and. Also, the effects are very creepy, which I could see. But, um, what else have I I seen? don't know about that, Robin. Hearing Jack Patillo talk about anything is kind of killing my existence. Boom, Jack Byrne. Only the, that's a one percenter joke out there. <laughs> uh, by the way, if we don't, I, I don't know if I've ever explained one percenter. Uh, but mm. that is a, that is a thing I've, a term I've heard used, but I've used myself, which is basically like one percent of your audience is going to get that joke. Uh, ah. Which you you like those you like those tiny references, but also you understand nobody's gonna fucking get that joke. Mm-hmm. Like if I if we started making cats jokes, those could be one percenters because oh, nobody yeah. would fucking get those. Who's actually seen cats other than seeing the the new movie version? And did they pay attention? Maybe, maybe. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, so what else? What else have you seen in your to be rid of? Is the thing uh, that you're listing? Oh, um. <laughs> This is the one that actually made me laugh, but um, there is a copy of Shaq Fu on the Sega Genesis heading to the landfill. Of course it was. Yeah. It's where it should like, go. 
<laughs> I was tempted to try and save it, but I was like, nah, let it stay. If you guys don't know, there's actually a website dedicated to destroying copies of Shaq Fu. Let me see if it's I can find it real quick. Shaq Fu was bad. It was weird. But also, um, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of, of little stuff like that, like... At this point, if you saw a copy of E.T., you should be like, you're going to risk, you're going to steal this shit and sell it on eBay for millions of dollars. But actually, that's interesting. Do you, do you, does your Goodwill do like any kind of appraisal and like recognize like an antique or limited edition of anything? Or do you not see uh, that when it get by the time it gets to you? But, um, no, I see that. But the way that the book scanner is, it basically scans the UPC code. Mm. And that's so I don't know. And things that don't have UPC codes are usually tossed in a bin that are taken to someone else to look up. Okay, so if 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 there was something really weird, it would probably be, yeah. But yeah, that's just something I wonder. Like, man, what if you found like a really old first edition or something? But who's ditching those at a Goodwill? Yeah, who knows? As I said, like I already got my eye. Like, but um, as I said, like when I saw Parasite Eve two, um, I was shook because um, that was a game that it was one of the games that got me over my um, got me playing um horror games a bit more. Like I'll 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 cite Resident Evil Four as the first game, the first Resident Evil game that got me over my fear of zombies. But if you guys know Parasite Eve Two, Parasite Eve Two isn't really zombies. It's just kind of weird monster stuff. But it has that Resident Evil style gameplay. And I saw a copy of that. I looked inside. Um, both discs are fucking there. I checked the discs. Fucking both of them look okay. And I'm just all like, why would you get rid of this? But then I, you know, I actually had like I was talking on our Discord community about it, and you know, some people are like. Or, like, giving reasons, and, you know, some of them I felt were violent, some of them I definitely did not feel. And I was like, yeah, I guess it's just up to, like, me and my personal opinions and bias of being a fucking collector. And, yeah, I can I can kind of see both sides, because on the one hand, yeah, I have a lot of shit that's collected that I'm not, like I said, I, I still have all my old PS2 games, and I'm not getting rid of them, because that would be dumb. They're in yeah. cases and everything, why would I ditch them? There's no... There's no monetary value to be recouped in ditching them, and mm -hmm. I might be able to recoup some of my entertainment value still, so, no. Yeah, like if, like, like I said, if we ever fucking consolidate, I got a working PS2 and a fucking first-gen PS3. You can pop those things when, fucking whenever. <laughs> That's great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna torture audience. I hope you're ready for Let's Play the Ere Erika 7 games on the PS2. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. You can't stop me. And, like, here's the thing, like, some people are saying, like, maybe their console broke, and it's like, then you just get another fucking console. Even yeah. if they're used. Like, like, ultimately, that's what I'd do. I'd never go, oh, fuck, my PS3's overheating, I can't play all these games, time to get rid of all of them. No, that's yeah. time to go on Amazon and be like, oh, that's the cheapest I can buy a PS3? Yeah. It's like, even PS1s are, you can still find, GameCube's are like, old systems, yeah, they're not being made anymore, but there's still plenty in circulation for one reason or another. Well, yeah, and PS2 especially. Like, I could probably hunt for a PS2 if I wanted. I just haven't gotten around to feeling like it was important lately because they stayed in production for years. Mm hmm And one of the so, most popular uh, games of all t uh, consoles of all time. So, like, yeah, I can kind of understand, like, as I said, like, I said, maybe, like, persons, like, found, like, digital versions of the game like that. But, like, I said, like, but Parasite Eve 2, it's like, I don't know, like, it's never had a re-release, which, you know, I cry eternally in because it's, like, if you guys haven't played, like, if I ever get the chance, like, I'm gonna play fucking Parasite Eve 2 for you, for y'all. Not Parasite Eve 1, and not Parasite Eve 3, but 2, because that is, that is the one I beat. And I think it's kind of what set me on, like, a lot of, like, um, the ideas that I like in kind of, like, the uh, horror games. Yeah, and there's actually, a lot of, like, if you, if you, thinking about it, Final Fantasy 12 is one of those PS2 games I own. Like, there's a lot of, f you, you have formative years, we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Where some stuff just kind of sticks and like, yeah, no, I know that feeling. Like, yeah. shit, what were the horror games that I played that really stuck with me that I liked? Dead Space is probably up there. Yeah. Because I didn't play a lot of scary games as a kid. Obviously. Yeah, like, like for me, it would literally be Parasite Eve 2, Resident Evil 4, and then Dead Space. Like, those three games. That is what basically formed my, my how I like my horror games, which is not so much, you know... Um, you know, like um, Outlast and Amnesia, but you know the action horror games where, yeah, they think it's totally scary and screaming, but I can fucking shoot it, and that makes me happy. And of course, I went back. Oh yeah, also that reminds me, I also found a copy of the director's cut of Resident Evil One. But I beat. But that's the thing. Resident Evil has had a re-release. Yeah, Resident Evil remake. Yeah, the Resident Evil remake, Three's, and now they uh, we're up to three of those. 
Capcom yeah, so has, the- Capcom has realized that they could they've realized the new ten- the Nintendo secret power and they could just re-release all the games. Oh shit. I should look up when the Zero ZX collection comes out. Yeah. Yeah, Rogue Robin, that's a uh, uh that's my that's my um we've had, actually we've actually talked on what's up about of games where they remove your agency for for the thrills is not my jam. Oh, fuck, it's scary. February 18th. That's next month, my dude. Oh no. Um games where I can shoot something and it's still gonna fucking kill me. That's what scares me. Like fucking I have never been so terrified in my life than in Dead Space when I'm fighting a fucking regenerator and I see it just growing its lens back and I'm like, oh no. Oh my, my plan has failed. Dead Space is like, yeah, Dead Space is really big into that kind of just like, haha, you thought you could do it. Oh no, fuck, you gotta solve the puzzle, dude. There's multiple, mm-hmm. there's multiple bits of that where it's like, oh, you can't just punch this. Yeah. And so that's why I said it's, um, but like, um, that started in Parasite Eve 2, which is, um, I should mention, Parasite Eve is a Squaresoft game. This was before it was Square Enix mm-hmm. on the PS1. So it was basically trying to cash in on fucking Capcom's, um, brand with Resident Evil and fucking Dino Crisis. That's so a game I'm trying to Speaking of Square use. and also no, uh, old games, that reminds me of, of something that you that we had another little conversation about, which is kind of funny. Mm. The uh, Somebody posted an image of joking about how uh, with images oh, God, of yeah. Persona with 3, 4, and 5 uh, renumbered 1, 2, and 3 because it's it's been a long time since 1 and 2 came out and mm-hmm. nobody really remembers them because those don't think, I don't think have proper remasters like they may have been re-released on other systems but i don't think they've been like remastered Mm -hmm. um and so for some reason just the way we are your first thought was that's if somebody said final fantasy 7 was the first final fantasy and i immediately thought wait didn't final fantasy have a weird numbering thing in the states and it did um which was pre-final fantasy yeah seven was the was interestingly enough the first one where they fixed it where they mm-hmm. went back to the correct numbers. So it was, one came out and was just Final Fantasy. Then I think we got four as two. We skipped two and yeah. three here. And, and then, then we six, got six as, as three. three. Skipping yeah. five. Um, mm-hmm. And then they decided to unfuck that when they went to the PlayStation, which was good. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so that was just, that was just reminding me of that. It's just a funny conversation we had because that's, uh, that was the thing. Also, remember back in the day with the video games, sometimes they just wouldn't get exported. No, hi, then, mother. Yeah, it's like, well, as I said, now that like back in like back fucking eighties and early nineties, like fucking remember Nintendo saved fucking Western gaming. It did. Mm-hmm. It literally because they switched up the marketing because there was the great crash, and then they were like, "Oh, this dude, this is a." In in Japan, they were like, "Dude, this is a toy company. They're toys." But in the states, they were like, "No, this is like serious entertainment tech." A, yeah, a no, case they, of marketing they, actually being good. Like that's what like that's what NES stands um, for is Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh they right, which it. was it was in the it, it was all just Famicom in Japan, right? Yeah, which is I think just family computer, mm-hmm. uh, which even then is not necessarily aiming at children. But in Japan, Famicoms are brightly colored. They got the three class the four classic colors. Um, mm-hmm. The the NES and SNES are like uh, just purple and gray because they mm-hmm. were like these are not toys. These are serious, even though mm. they people bought them as toys. Mm. I don't, th- I don't think the UK did that with the Super Nintendo. Yeah, but like, point being is, we didn't get like everything that JP was like. It was a very select okay. Though. Well, that's f- that's fair. We're grabbing about VC three, but also that was also the era of the hey, PSP. let's exile things to the PSP. Yeah, which I'm hoping they will eventually unfuck. VC4 was nominated for a Game Awards, guys. Sega, it's it's a cool franchise. It came back. Please. And Give you me also more did a, You already did a remaster of um, 1. one. Uh, so please do a 2 and 3 bundle, please, for maybe the... I don't know if it'll come out for the 4. It's probably not enough oh, time shit, for that. I'm getting money. I can buy fucking right to art books now. <sighs> oh, no. Luckiest combined income with <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> the worst. I gotta, I no man should money. have this power. Yeah, that's another one. Fire Emblem. I know we haven't got all the Fire Emblems over there. Over yeah, here. Um, Fire Emblem was, was I don't know why. Maybe it's because there was so much text. Mm-hmm. Which is another thing to think about, because like we talked about Final Fantasy VII and came over. That was a huge undertaking for uh, Squaresoft of America to translate. and Which is why the translation is kind of janky in places, because it was done by like four dudes in a room with a spreadsheet, basically. Mm. Um, but 
there's a lot of a lot of friggin' text in those games, and that may be why some of them didn't come over. But um, Fire Emblem didn't come over until the Game Boy Advance, and not even the first one. Um, I think they deliberately made Seven Blazing Sword to be approachable because it had uh, the Lin chapter as like an extended tutorial and all that stuff, and like it was deliberately set up to be like Babby's first Fire Emblem. And since then, I think we've gotten all the releases this side, but still. At other times, I know that on the DS and 3DS, Nintendo's localization has been lacking, whether that's some kind of deliberate moral guardians bullshit or was just, <laughs> oh, fuck, there's so much text, we're going to die. Yeah. But, like, so, yeah, we haven't gotten all these iterations. It wasn't until, like, because Final Fantasy VII was a major Western um, hit. Like, it was super big. Um, I don't know, like, actually, I don't know, actually, how well it did in Japan, honestly. I'm assuming it did awesome. Um, but like, yeah, so a lot of people like, there's a lot of people who, yeah, guess, have, like, you know, they had their Super Nintendo, they played fucking Final Fantasy VI and stuff, but that was still when gaming was still kind of new. Yeah. And also, I, 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 th- I think honestly, from what I remember of them, the first three or four-ish Final Fantasies were kind of samey. Like, um, I don't remember which one it was, but it took them a couple games for the characters to have actual character. Yeah. Final Fantasy 1 and 2 definitely were like that. It was very, uh, it was very bad. And I think in, in 3 is when they actually started adding a lot more story to it. And 4 is when um, that took off. Honestly, I don't know much about Final Fantasy 5 now that I think about it. I yeah, always I jump from 4 to 6. Um, but they have re- remastered and re-released like, almost all of those at this point. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, so, like, yeah. But, but still, that's one of those things when a lot of people, like... I can, I'm not gonna say it was everyone's, but I can. I I'm fairly confident in saying that Final Fantasy VII was a lot of people's first, you know, JRPG, especially on the PlayStation One. Yeah, it was definitely a killer app for PS One, and there was enough of a gap between when it came out and when Final Fantasy came out that like there were some people who may have like played the first one on the NES, and then when they got a different console, it came out. But for plenty of people, it's new enough that it was their first, and. Also, would you, if you jumped straight from Final Fantasy to Final Fantasy VII, would you even tell they were the same franchise? Not really, no. No, they're like, okay, there's some similarities. There's a Sid, he can jump with a spear. (laughs) Um, They used all the same magic moves in the localization. That's about it. The summons, there's a Bahamut in it. That's about it. Bahamut? A Bahamut? And then another Bahamut, and then the extra super secret double Bahamut, and then Knights (laughs) of the Rounds. But like, yeah, so like, and I made that I made that relation because for me, Persona 3 was my first Persona game. It was my first actual my first um, Shin Megami Tensei game. Just fully. Same. Um, so like, yeah, because so I heard people... really good things about it. And it was like, oh, shit, dude, you can go on Amazon and I can order Persona 3 FES. Yeah, I played it on the PS2 when it came with the fucking soundtrack on CD. That so was a shit. I lost see. it. I am upset about that. And then four Persona, came out. So like, Persona Two was on the PlayStation in 1999, I believe. No, oh, interesting. Uh, I may have I may have discovered the difficulty. Mm. Uh, I'm looking at the Wikipedia's. The pages. And which which one came first? Which Persona Two? Oh, what? never mind. I see it on the page. So Innocent Sin was the first one that was only released in Japan. Well, explains that reason. Or was it was Eternal Punishment the one that was first? I because I, I think it isn't based on the phrasing. But um, Persona Two Eternal Punishment was released uh, here. It, okay, it was later. It came out later. So for some reason, the sequel was released in America, which is probably why that game is not as well appreciated. Because I'm sure that was fucking confusing. <laughs> like honestly, like I'm pretty sure we we didn't start full on getting almost everything getting worldwide releases on it until like the PS2 era. I want to say. Yes, that's about when uh, and also uh, then especially, that was com- almost completely done, I think, by the PS3, other than like just marketing the, because the PlayStation Portable and Vita weren't super popular over here. Mm. But by the time we get to the PS3, Xbox 360 era, uh, we said bye-bye region locking. Yeah. Which really did it in, because then it was like, well, there's no fucking point in not localizing it because they can just import it. And they will. So... Now, Persona 1, or Revelations Persona, was released on PlayStation in 1996 for both countries. But that's getting a little in the back there. 
I don't know. I I like I I I have nothing against them. It's just like I f- I feel like they are they are kind of more obscure. Like and it's not like necessarily Atlas forgot about them because there's a shitload no. of references to two and three, I believe. Uh, but it's just it's 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 kind of weird, and I don't know. Maybe that's why uh, Axe is reporting that the writer who wrote them left the company. That may explain why they're kind of like because Japan is like that. They're very respectful about how to handle stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I don't know. Somebody was somebody made a joke about an anime that was was like uh historical characters we can't touch, but then Japan is like fucking Nobunaga's and everything. <laughs> I'm literally watching an anime this core where Nobunaga reincarnates as a dog. I think that was the anime they were referencing. But on the other hand, for people who are existing, they're like modern stuff. They're like, oh shit, a character's gone. Well, we want to be careful. Uh, you know, an actor is gone. We have to do something about this character. Oh shit, yeah. uh, you left the company. We're just not going to talk about this at all. So uh, maybe that's why Atlas doesn't want to touch those games. But in that case, that's just yeah. I'm waiting. Actually, weirdness. when is the next? Ten- when is the Tales game come? Next Tales game come out? Yeah. Because I know there, I definitely know there was a couple of. Oh, that's something I saw. I fucking saw, saw um, Tales of Symphonia on the GameCube, uh, like yesterday, and I'm like, I need this game. I don't have a GameCube. I want this game. Because I used to have a GameCube, and I had that game, and I fucking loved it, because it was my first Tales game. I don't got a Wii. I got a Switch. But I also want a GameCube. Because GameCubes are great. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. And, hey, you never know how long it's going to take Nintendo to re-release that fucking shit on Switch. Yeah. Like I said, X... Though X, X, I think, has a better point, that you because you can play GameCube on a Wii, you might as well get a Wii, so you can also play Wii games. Eventually, yeah. But I'm collecting everything. Like actually, I have PS- hey, you know what? You've got the PS2 and the PS3. I got a fucking uh, original ass Wii down here. Like I said, we can consolidate. We're gonna put our powers and powers, and we will have a fucking game room. It's gonna be amazing. We'll have a uh, we'll have a little. Well, I mean, especially once we and we're planning on it, we're growing. We'll eventually get an office space. There will have to be a dedicated Let's Play room, which will probably need that sound stuff. But mm-hmm. we'll we'll get a couch and some mic arms, and great. we'll we'll grumps this shit. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's. You know, Lucky has his superpowers. I have mine. Oh, also, yes, NA got both uh, Tales of Azalea and Tales of Azalea too, because I have them on my PS3. Um. Well, and also, Robin will be able to share those video games with you. Yeah. I have Tales of Azalea one and two digitally. I should probably get them physically. So, here's the thing. Lucky, I'm assuming this hmm? lion lady with underwear that says Siege that they just showed up on my timeline. That's probably uh, an Ark Knights thing, right? Yeah, that's Ark Knights. She's voiced by um, Aiko Kawasumi. All right, I will retweet this and share <laughs> it with our friends. I'm like, hmm, hmm. But yeah, video games. Oh, the that's past. Lo- that, that's, cool. that's 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 under boob. That's under boob, yo. Holy shit. That might be a slightly spicy retweet, but I'll let it go. Danger zone. Well, let's see. That is some belly. Uh, we've gone for two and a half hours. Do you have any more uh, work stories? I guess is where we started this before we started talking about just. Vigi games oh, yeah. in past. Well, yeah, I've seen a lot of cool stuff. Like I've seen like Gundam kits. I've seen well, like not like in my section, but I have to walk through the warehouse to get to the book to the media sorter machine. And I'm like, how much do you like Legos? I like Legos a lot. I I like they're, Lego- I, they're too fucking expensive to buy as an adult, which is ironic. Did I did I share the picture? I probably didn't. I think I already deleted it. <sighs> Actually, no, I'm have. pretty I sure think I remember a, le- a, a Lego collection picture because. There's a box near the offices in the front. These these cardboard boxes are huge. It's five by they're five by five by five. So five feet across um each ways and five feet up. This box is literally half filled with just loose Legos. And I'm just all like stun silence. I just realized me staring open mouthed at the fucking floor does nothing for the audio. But it's like I am entirely shook and just like where has this been in my whole life? Let me just crawl in this box and play. Because I fucking miss Legos. I really do. Yeah, we have a giant time with my old Legos. I don't I don't have time to fuck around with them as much, but it's like Legos is one of those things that I'd love to be into, but it's like you go like even if you stroll down the stroll down the aisle at like your local Walmart or Toys R Us and you look and you're like, Oh, that Millennium Falcon kid is cool. You want how much money for that? For a children's fun, toy? Is fun my fact, voice I saw slightly? One of the sets I found, um, because if they have a like like, uh, the box sets, they'll actually do that, and I saw Millennium Falcon, so I was like, hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a funny gif. I'm scrolling through just random uh, file names and images also in, in another thing, so I'm just posting. Oh my god, this fucking 
gif of the girl being attacked by the Bach monster. I'm going to star that one, yeah, for later. Yeah, I'm going to star that. Just uh... Mimics. <laughs> yep. This reminds me when I used to play Metal Gear Online. <laughs> yeah, thinking. fuck, I remember Metal Gear Online. <laughs> that was great. My greatest strategy, and it worked every single fucking time, I would just go find a bunch of boxes, climb on top of them, hide as a box. They never, ever saw me. They never saw me. No, people, honestly, I don't know what was up, but a lot of people didn't play Metal Gear Online very good. They, I think they maybe thought it was a traditional shooter experience. It's really not. It's like, it's not quite stealthy, but it definitely was like a, you should be more procedural and like think about stuff and focus on headshots and stuff. Kind yeah, of uh, Metal Gear Online was a game that came with Metal Gear Solid 4, and I played it. It was fun. I played it a lot too. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of good. I think I yeah, but unfortunately, um, a lot of other people didn't like it, so it went down pretty quick. They tried to sell it uh, as a standalone for a while, but it flopped. Y- yeah, then there have been metal online modes for Metal Gear in the past, but the and even Five has some of that, but it it I don't think it went over very well with the console crowd because most of the uh, it just was different and weird. But I think Metal Gear's online multiplayer stuff has always been that. Yeah, but. I said I liked it, but because it was great, because I could just hide in a fucking box, wait for someone to walk past me, and they always fucking do it, pop out of my box. I just shoot you in the back of the head and die, and I just go move to the next box, or I hide in the aisle in an aisle drum and an oil drum next to all the other oil drums. It was great. I just do. I would just go be- between those points back and forth, and it never. They never fucking caught me. Of course, sometimes they caught me when I was moving between them, and then I died. Yeah, but ah. That was one of the games that solidified my love of the P90 because you yeah. you can win a bullshit shootout in that game by just having more bullets. Mm-hmm. And hey, the P90 holds a lot. I love the P90. It's great. Because that was one that day. was the thing was if you it it wasn't because it was Metal Gear Solid based. It was based on the same engine as four. Mm-hmm. Like you, it, it it was not designed for straight up shootouts. Like you would probably shoot through maybe half a person's life bar and then it would stop and reload. But if you have a P90, you have like 50 rounds and can just keep shooting. So that was my strat was I was always, I would always buy the P90 SMG and just be like, okay, sure, Mr. AK can do a little bit more damage, but he's going to stop and reload. And I've still got 20 more bullets, which are going right in that center of mass. And that's how I would win gunfights if I just, if two guys around the corner at the same time and start shooting, usually there would be a break to reload. And I didn't have to reload. Sniping reload was also break. fun. I enjoyed sniping. Sniping is always fun at Metal Gear. It's just some of the maps weren't great for it. I had I remember some of them were though. Sni- there were some great maps. I think after one of the one of the ex- uh, I don't know if they were they were updates. I don't know if they were necessarily expansion packs, but they added some shit like Grozny Grad from Metal Gear Solid Three and stuff. There was a lot of fun. A lot of fun there. Mm-hmm. I I I does anybody have that code lying around? I'd love to play that again. <laughs> Uh, if they do, Konami probably has it. Fuckers. Mm-hmm. Konami, I will buy Metal Gear Solid Online source code for you for a nickel. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to. I I hope. I hope Kojima's taking his fucking Death Stranding money. Oh, I, like- I, I I would think he would be probably is like like I don't know. On the one hand, I could see how he would be like, finally, I'm fucking done with Metal Gear. But also, he did keep making those games, so I wouldn't be surprised if. If for no other reason that they would stop making pachinko pachinko machines of it, if he would be interested in just buying the Metal Gear Solid rights off them, don't forget Zone of Enders. Take both of them. It's it's like these are my stuff. children. Stay. <laughs> and then and then with Kojima Productions and Sony, finish Zone of the Enders three. I mean, fucking like as we said, Death Stranding only came out like a month before the fucking video. You still swap the nominations and still walk away with a fair amount of prizes. For yeah. his first game, Death Stranding was a... Uh, and also it sold a shitload. Mm-hmm. It was a commercial and critical success. So I'm pretty sure he's made bank and Sony was like, I, yeah. And fuck, Ooh. it's been months. People are still talking about it. Like, I, mm-hmm. I, because I, I follow him on Twitter I, and, mm-hmm. and Kojima Productions. There's still, like, op-eds and opinion pieces about how Death Stranding is really cool and groundbreaking that he retweets. Mm-hmm. It's good. Um, so... so- I'm going to go listen to fucking BB's theme and Death Stranding again, because those are good tracks. Uh, but honestly, if that's everything, we're already at two, 245. We can probably wrap up here. I don't think there's... Uh, there's probably not enough time for you to talk more anime. No. Um, as I said, yeah, look, we can save it. Store up. Charge our attack. Sure. And, like, I could talk about tabletop RPG stuff, but, again, I'm not... Other than just letting everybody... 
letting everybody know, both the audience and Lucky and stuff, is like, um, not this weekend, of course, because, of course, the moment we bring it up, I feel like every time we ask, Ron's like, weekends are great for me, but not this weekend. It is pretty much every time. It, it, um, I do feel like it happens every time, but we'll get there eventually. We've got some EP stuff to conclude. We'll at least conclude this adventure, and then there's a couple others I want to see. It, and I want to. I, I want to at least adapt for two E. We can do if you guys are still feeling it. I need um, to save that hex maniac because she is the thick. Um, but other than that, I feel like I would want to do some. I either want to do something related to Gen Sekai, but also I'm still writing that so much, so much writing. Uh, a, it's like 160 something pages. I'm almost done with the ge- geographical fluff. There's like one more section to write. I just ha- have been busy recording. And then we'll see if anybody reads it. Um, I might take a break and formulate some uh, some more mechanical sections and reorder some stuff. But I've been doing a lot of writing. It's cool and I like it a lot. But um, it'll either be some testing of that because there's and there's <laughs> but I don't know when that will be. There's still some final tuning I need to make. Like I need to actually um lay out the the specialization trees and stuff right Mm -hmm. so i need to like i've i've built what talents are in them at what levels i need to actually transpose those onto a graphical form so people can see how they like are connected Mm -hmm. like how specialization trees are but other than that it would be like it would probably be star wars because i feel i feel the itch to do that again and it would either be like i said a clone wars game um set in the clone wars and everybody plays clone wars guys uh, you don't have to all play clones or whatever, but it would be something. And I'd, I'd talk to people through all that stuff. Um, but the other thing would be just do, f- like, straight Force and Destiny again. Like, obviously, I I'm not... I wouldn't be so much to be so like, no, you can't look at Edge of the Empire or, or Age of Rebellion. But, like, I would definitely want it to be Force and Destiny themed and focused. I mean, that's what we that's what we always did. It's like, we always, like, started with, like, all right, we're either doing, like, Force and Destiny or... Um, age of rebellion but we pulled like all our information from all books well yeah i let everybody play all the like in our big game i let everybody play all the classes yeah um and it it turned out one of everything um to start because there was oh fuck i don't know there's lots of books it's in there somewhere Mm -hmm. the listen axe that's why i have oodles and oodles of guides so many like if we actually are going to run some star wars and you're going to you're going to want to be in that you will get to see my wonderful world of compilations and guides. There's a lot of tables, yo. Oh, boy. Because um, there's three different FFG lines, and now they're doing, um, like, standalone books like the, the Dawn of the Rebellion one, and then now the two Clone Wars ones they did. So there's a lot of fucking material, which I have just categorized over and over again. Um, uh, I think the Mandal- uh, fuck, the Mandalorian species stats might even have been in, like, an adventure book or something. But I've got them recorded in my big, great big list of species. Human, comma, Mandalorian. Uh, but, yeah, so... And that, that'll that take some workshopping, but yes. Or Straight Force and Destiny would be kind of the thing, because I'm just like, I could do some stuff with that. The, like, exploring and doing... Doing the Jedi quest and the learning stuffs. Uh, the only problem... Like, my only problem with probably playing a Star Wars game is I'm always going to think of the cat, and I it's gonna might be hard for me to, like, move away from that. I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll see, because you played we'll another see. couple of Star Wars characters, too. Yeah, but they were short. Like I was enjoying like my Mando fucking mercenary. That was fun. Yeah, but we didn't get to, we didn't get anywhere with no, that. No, we didn't go anywhere with that. What was? I'm pretty sure we. I think we had one other Star Wars game. Yes, we had it. We had it. That was the one you. I think you alluded to the one that was core Age of Rebellion. But oh yeah, where yeah, you, yeah. Where you taken over a planet? Uh, what was your character's name? Was it Riha? That was an interesting <laughs> game, and I think you guys did a lot of fun stuff. But it kind of just petered out because I don't know. I think we got. That was weird because you guys all started playing night level characters because it was like we'd already played a lot of our core game. So it, mm-hmm. it was like you guys wanted to start with a little bit extra EXP. So everybody was pretty good at what they did, mm-hmm. which I think made advancement a little weird. Yeah. If I was to play a Jedi, what would I do? Maybe I play man who does fists. There is that. Good. There's a couple of those. Um, I know in the mm-hmm. warrior book, there's one called Steel Hand Adept, which is great. Mm-hmm. You can be a punchman. Uh, and I think there's a grappling one and a different one. There's, yeah, <laughs> that's the beauty of, like, on the one hand, it gets a little oversaturated, but on the other hand, it's like, there's, there's fucking something for everybody in there. Yeah. And that's what, that's one of the things. I like fiddly bits, and you can find fiddly bits for everything. So, yeah, maybe next time I'll just play a force monk. I'll be bald. And I'm gonna max out fucking move and enhance, like I always do, because you're not, I just love it. Okay? Uh, well, hey, maybe you can even pick up a new one, because, like, um, having just reviewed those materials to put in my great big guidebook, um, the, the one force power in the warrior book is Endure. Ooh, that might be fun too. 
which I think is mostly about like enhancing your damage and your uh, not your like your damage resistance and probably your soak and like wound threshold and stuff. I didn't read it super good, but I was reminded like, oh yeah, endure. <laughs> hey, that sounds cool. I might do that. But all right, uh, Mega, why don't you take us out? I think we're okay. done. Yeah, we're about done. So uh, hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to give us a like. If you have any comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. And maybe we'll have a final thought there, because that reminded me of something I wanted to mention. Uh, but also, you can join us on our Discord. That link is in our description or on our channel page. And if you ever want to join the secret tabletop cabal, that's the only way. And of course, if you're here and haven't already, though, please consider subscribing to the channel so you can always get our latest videos. And even if you're already subscribed, considering the bell for notifications, you always know when we post a new video. Because um, lately I've been waking up earlier, so Let's Talk FGO gets posted sooner. Mm -hmm. And also, notifications let you know when we stream. And I said that I might be streaming some in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to make sure not to step on whatever Lucky ends up doing, but he's not sh Lucky's not sure what Lucky's doing, so we'll figure it <laughs> out. That's the usual. We'll figure it out. We'll find a good time. And, uh, of course, like it says at the front of the show, consider submitting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies. You can get access to episodes in audio format, in fact, for as little as a dollar a month, and it really helps us out. So uh, we're coming back next week with more Let's Take FGO and more What's Up. And you can also check out the Let's Take FGO that already came out. Uh, but I was reminded, we didn't really talk on about anime, but I was reminded th that it was funny. Uh, mm -hmm. I could have predicted this, but we got a couple of comments last week on WhatsApp that were oh, like, yeah. about Attack yeah. on Titan, which were like, no, really, guys, it's it's really cool. There's a lot of stuff in Attack on Titan. And I'm like, okay, sure, I believe you, but also that doesn't necessarily, that's the <laughs> thing I talked about with like people selling it is just, but it's really cool, guys. I'm like, that doesn't actually tell me anything about it. Yeah. Not that you should necessarily take this as an excuse to write an essay about Attack on Titan in the comments, but. I just thought it was funny since we were talking about comments. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're done then. So, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see you later, everybody. Smoke bomb.